Welcome to episode 80 of the Reptile Gumbo Podcast. Uh, we have another, another uh, jumbled mess of uh, co-host because Katie's not here tonight. Robert wasn't here last week. Katie's not here tonight because softball starts and apparently practice is at like 7.30 to 9 on Wednesdays. When it's not 1,000 degrees. I guess that makes sense, but still, I'm just thinking 10-year-olds have to be out till 9 on Until a school night. Start. Ugh. So that's where Katie's at. But with that said, we will be moving this podcast to Tuesday. So anybody that does watch it live, uh, hopefully you can move to Tuesdays with us. Uh, we moved to Wednesdays because of softball in Louisiana. Now we're here in Texas. We're moving back to Tuesday. But with that, welcome, Rachel. Welcome, Robert. Welcome back, Robert. Hello. How are you feeling? Like shit. That's good. Yeah. No, I'm just tired. <laughs> Long days in the shop, and I'm not uh, not 100 percent yet. Still coughing like crazy, and have very little energy. So uh, being in the heat all day is not fun. I mean, that's not good for you. It probably is better for me than sitting in my office doing nothing. You know, what you should do just take some ivermectin. Yeah, I hear that's working great. Or for people apparently, out there. some was it? My sister said earlier she saw. I my, saw an article. You're gonna love this one. People are wondering why when they were taking ivermectin to cure COVID. And in case anybody's listening, uh, that's stupid. Ivermectin right. is for internal parasites, right. not viruses. But they were wondering why they were pooping out stringy worms. Come to find out they weren't stringy worms. The fact that they were putting large doses of poison into their body caused the lining of their stomach to sloth off. And that's what they were pooping out. Oh. Yeah, apparently some people have been taking... Uh, glyphosate, which is a herbicide. Well, that's good. Yeah. Everyone knows herbicides are killing weeds are great at killing viruses. Yeah. Uh, okay, then. You know what this virus you know, is going to do? This virus is going to kill a lot of people, but it's also going to cause stupid people to die. Right. That's my whole thing. It's like, so, you know, hey, you want to take some fucking horse medicine? Take all you want. Let's get those stupid people. Yeah. I'll stick with the uh, vitamin D and zinc. It worked pretty good for us. Yeah. I, I, the one thing I was happy to find out is that when you're sick, you're allowed to take more of those orange flavored gummies. Yes. yes. And I took handfuls of those things because yes. they taste good. <laughs> vitamin C. I do. I like them. I need somebody to make those gummies without the large levels of vitamin C because they taste good. Yeah. I think they have 200% of the daily dose <laughs> in each one. I don't know who it is in our chat because it's this Facebook user. But it says viruses can't be alive <laughs> inside of you if they aren't, if you aren't Let alive. Let me see who that was. That okay. is true. <laughs> Here. Although, biology. That was Max. Oh, it was Max. <laughs> Max Hicks, who will join us shortly. Uh, <laughs> The science part of me goes, viruses were never alive because they're not a living mm. thing. Just throwing that out there. Gly glyphosate is it's Roundup. Round up. Like, thanks, Travis. Nice. Travis Wyman went ahead. And, so people yeah. are taking Roundup to kill a virus. Yeah. All right. Well, people are fucking <laughs> Like Max said, if you're not alive, the virus can't kill they, you. They found the loophole. <laughs> there you go. Maybe they are geniuses. Yeah. Oh. Uh, you know what's crazy is growing up, my grandpa mixed. The concentrated Roundup 50 50 with diesel, and that's what we sprayed everything on the dairy farm with. That's so horrifying. Yeah, that probably couldn't have been good for my health as a young no. man walking around with that pump sprayer spraying everything. And you're just like, an adult gave this to me. It's got to be fine. I'll tell you what, you kill the fuck out some weeds. Oh, I would <laughs> <laughs> they did not come back. Oh, shit. Um, so let's get into uh, our sponsors. I don't, I don't have Katie here to read. <sighs> To read your blurb, so <sighs> people know who I am at this point. I could have read what it I if do, you would have given it to me. What I sell, it's on her phone. I got, I don't have it. I know. Uh, but if you need a high quality PVC rack, you can go to lsreptileracks.com. Damn, I can still hear it. <laughs> um, uh, John Grant has the uh, GFE enclosures on Amazon now. Yeah, the good fucking enclosures. Mm -hmm. That's not what it's, it's, it is what it, it's not what it's, <laughs> it is what it seems. But check out. Uh, Grant Family Exotics, and they're on. You said they're on Amazon, right? Yeah, they are listed on Amazon. Now. They are an awesome little PVC. They're flat packed to you. Uh, they're a, roughly the size of like a 15 gallon tank, space wise. I think somewhere around there. But it's got a locking acrylic front door. We talked about it on a previous episode. Um, so check out on Amazon. Is I maybe under Grant Family Exotics? It's under GFE. Under GFE, just search GFE. It comes in white. Comes in black. So it's gonna take it a little while to get some traction. Yeah. Cause they're like even right now, if you if you um if you search PVC reptile enclosure, 
it doesn't even come up yet because there's several, you know, some of the other less quality ones. Yeah, some of the Chinese ones and stuff come up. But you can always go over to the Grant Family Exotics Facebook page. Yep. Uh, Grant has posted it all over that, so you can find JT's stuff everywhere. He's super proud of that cage, as he should be. It is an awesome, mm -hmm. it's definitely an awesome cage. If you're needing a small cage, great for <clears> quarantine <throat> or great for a little showpiece, uh, even if you have like one sink, you don't want to put it in a tub, it'll be awesome. Oh, damn dog is howling. Can you <laughs> shove that door closed? Sure. There we go. <laughs> Everybody else left the house and now the dog's screaming. Uh, so check out uh, Lone Star Reptile Racks for racks. Uh, you are going to be busy. I know you have some orders you've got to get. With that new new fancy machine, you got lots of orders, which is good. Got to pay for itself. Yes. Got to make that machine work. Uh, our other sponsor, Hurt Reptile Shows. So a couple updates I want to do that. But uh, the next show is Conroe. That's September 12th, 11th and 12th. That is coming up. In next two, weekend. Two, damn, yeah. In two, in two weekends. Not this one, but the one after that. That is the uh, the big Conroe show in September. Uh, it'll probably have the best selection of animals. If you were at the last Conroe, it may be a little uh, light on some of the animals you wanted because it wasn't the baby time. But now it's baby time. So come out to Conroe. It's going to be a big show. The New Orleans show posted for September 25th and 26th has been canceled. Uh, if you've been living under a rock, uh, New Orleans got hit by a hurricane. And so because of all that's going on over there, they have canceled the New Orleans show. But uh, I did want to pull up for Conroe. My God, can I don't know if anybody out there can hear our dog screaming from the other room, but I can hear it. In Is she downstairs? No, she's in Joe's room. Uh, no, she... Oh, that's Joe's little dog. Yeah, that's not Millie. Millie's fine. Is Joe's bedroom door closed? She may be downstairs. She may be in the crate. I don't know. She's going to be dead in a minute. You going to see if you can find her? Yeah. Go ahead and strangle her when you do. <laughs> uh, but uh, there will be another auction at the Conroe show in two weekends. We had an auction last time. It was on Saturday after the show at the venue. It was great. There will be another one. Um, that money is going to go to help uh the nor our new orleans people are our louisiana people um come out there there's some really cool stuff auctioned god i hope there are no gene thongs auction this time i don't think i can ever see that again yeah uh oh someone asked how my family was in louisiana they're great my house my house in louisiana got some rain that was luckily that was it after last year's hurricanes i was glad this one was just a little bit of rain um <clears throat> Yeah, it sucks to lose that show, man. That's three shows for the fall we've lost out of the seven shows we had for the whole fall. Yeah. That's a lot of money. But, you know, the that, people in New Orleans, that, that one, you know. Well, so I spent several summers the last few years going down to Grand Isle, Louisiana. We'd rent a house, my dad, myself. What's uh, saying fuck no to? To the shorts. To the oh, palm. good. <laughs> but we would go <laughs> down God. to Grand Isle, Louisiana, which is south of New Orleans, um, for fishing trips. We'd go kayak fishing for, you know, a week at a time sometimes. And I watched uh, either drone or helicopter footage of Grand Isle the other day. Bad. Three feet of sand on the island. It, and and most of it doesn't exist anymore. It said 40% of the structures are gone. That, that broke my heart to see that. Yeah. Because that's one of like, my happiest places on earth. You cross the bridge onto the island and you fuck everything else in the world. And uh, to see it wiped away just it killed me. When, that, that, when it hit the island, it was 150 mile an hour hurricane winds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was almost a category five. Yeah, by like two miles yeah. per hour or something like that. Yeah, I think they said they had 165 mile an hour gusts. Jesus. Jesus. But just not sustained winds. But geez, I mean, I saw some <laughs> like security camera footage from a beach house or like a like a fishing place. Oh, enough. In Fushan. Ah, my phone's still on. <laughs> In Fushan. Yeah. And that shit was like apocalyptic. Yeah. I saw some stuff. The, uh, the normal bait shop on Grand Isle that I normally go to had cameras underneath it where you go down to get the bait, and it was just nothing but water, everything banging around, mm -hmm. launched around. It uh, so it's bad. So, if you can come to the show, come to the uh, auction afterwards on Conroe, and and help give towards that, or you can always give to Herp's Family Foundation. The Herp's Family Foundation that money will go to help towards uh, several of our our Herp's family in that area, Slidell, New Orleans. In that entire area so uh there's that our other sponsor uh wiregrass exotics check out wiregrass exotics in 
Ozark, Alabama, the Ruas. They are awesome people. Um, if you're anywhere near South East Alabama, go check them out. It'll be a great trip. You'll love it. They're wonderful people. I posted a video. They had the news come out to their place and talk to them about snakes and people coming across snakes and stuff. And and Dallas did a great job. Um, and oh, I got to mm-hmm. answer that song. Um, uh, this person wouldn't call me back. So they they talked to him about what kind of snakes they could find uh, around there and what they should do if someone finds snakes. It was really cool. I enjoyed getting to see their their shop and all. I'll have to get on there and watch that. Yeah, it was cool. I, I wonder how many people are weirded out by when they hear Dallas talk with all the piercings and everything, but he sounds like a lawyer. Like he's very nice and educated and clear. It's not what people expect when they see that. That just tells you not to judge a book by its cover. Oh, I agree. It's what I expect because. That's half the community has piercings and I won't because oh, yeah. I'm not doing that. But anyway, I'm a bitch when it comes to pain. But I just think like when the general person's watching that video, they're going, that's not what I expect him to sound like. Oh, I mean, you're a bitch about a lot of things. You have to have gummy vitamin C instead of swallowable vitamin C. Well, the gummy vitamins taste good. Do you know how hard it was to find that? <laughs> they taste good. They are yummy. I'm telling you, I've, I've eaten almost that entire jar and that was a giant jar. I have like uh, three of them at home. I'm surprised I'm not orange. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> three times. If someone butt dialed you three times. Oh. So uh, let's go ahead and bring in our guest because he's sitting there quietly in his little box on the screen. There he is, Max. How's it going? Max, I'm pissed. The bears Why? let me down. Oh, I was, well. <laughs> I, was expecting the, I was expecting the bears to eat you and and they let me down. There was a couple times they sort of almost might have. <laughs> I have two stories that I haven't told anyone about. And I was like, it's either going to be first out on the video oh, it's or coming out this podcast. I want to find it. So if anybody doesn't know, and... Max, uh, he's been on here before. But Max went to Alaska for, what, a week? Uh, about 11 days. Uh, 11 days. And then I spent a day in Seattle. That's right. You you uh, debated whether you should hop in a car and go find Ryan Reynolds in Canada. Yeah, yeah, that was on the way back. I I I actually uh, I had a couple Bloody Marys at the airport because I was like, I'm gonna be here for a while, and I decided not to rent a car. And like buzzed, I go up to the guy on the way back, and I was like, Hey, there's a lot of flights leaving. Can I leave right now? And he goes, There's a plane right there. And I was like, Okay, <laughs> I just came back early. <laughs> I just feel like there's a plane right there, and he's like. Maybe someone should ask if it's going where he needs to go. That plane, <laughs> that plane ends up in like Pennsylvania somewhere. Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so we're going to get into that shortly. I want to go through. Uh, we had a couple of questions this week. Um, we'll do. I'll do the serious question first, and then we'll do the fun question that Max had because that one, that one was pretty good. And Rachel will be pretty good for that one because she's guilty of all the shit that is in that question. <laughs> Oh, wow. I don't know what the question is. I'm sorry to say that. Naming your snakes. Yeah, names. Um, yeah, so it's fine. But so the other question that I posted this week, uh, which sucks, was what has been your experience with mites and how did you get them or get rid of them? And the reason I asked that question is because for the first time in almost 20 years, I have mites. And not just like, oh, look, a mite. I went from no mites to like a fucking thousand mites in no time i don't know what happened but i walked in one day looked at my big sun glow boa and she is just nose to tip of her tail covered in giant ass mites and uh i can't figure it out i don't know how they got there uh all snakes that have been put in that snake room have been quarantined and while in quarantine there were no mites uh i haven't brought anything else in there so somehow i got them uh, and I know that we live usually in a society, especially in this hobby, where people won't talk about the negatives. So I can guarantee there's a ton of people out there that have had mites and they just don't say it because they're afraid of people to know that anything negative happened. But I figured I'd share it. And then I asked some people on Facebook what they've done because it happens. If, sooner or later, if you have a ton of snakes, there's a good chance you're going to find some mites here or there. You better not get COVID because obviously you don't know how to quarantine. <laughs> I, just, <laughs> I, I already had COVID. You were gone during that time. And I did quarantine. I sat in my room for a week and a half, and it sucked. I was like, the three of us all just got over it. At least y'all all quarantined together in the house and moved around. Yep. I was stuck in a bedroom. We stuck Lily in the bedroom because she's the only one who didn't get COVID. I'd say that poor kid, but it's Lily. Forget her. 
Oh, uh, so uh, going through this, let's see. Sean McCarthy said he had them a few years ago, and he used Frontline, best thing he ever used. So I, uh, our buddy April, who used to be a co-host in here, and April put out a video on using Frontline for mites. And at the time, I was like, that's a really cool video. And then it became kind of uh, recently, I was like, hey, I need to get some Frontline, which in case anybody's wondering, no one sells that in person. The Frontline spray, could not find it. I looked for it, could not find it, had to order it. But in the meantime, after talking to John Grant, I went and bought Nix for, I knew you could do this. I'd done it before way, way, way ago, but you can mix Nix with water and make your own spray for getting rid of mites. And so I did that. Uh, I treated my boa, then I treated her again, and then I actually rubbed her down with vegetable oil. And now I need to give her a bath tonight or tomorrow, and then I'm going to do frontline again because uh, I did my frontline finally came in, and I'm going to try and get rid of that. But it's going to be a multi step process to get rid of these things so when you did the nix you mixed it i guess in a water gallon jug yeah that's a nightmare by the way for anybody wondering because there's not enough room there's not enough room uh, so and it does so not you, break down no it just floats i i asked i asked john grant i was like how do you do i was like you mix it in a small thing and then you pour it in there i was like that'd been awesome to know prior to me trying to shake up this gallon that doesn't really shake because it's full with this Nix that just kind of floats. It looks like and a lot And another thing is, is the uh, permethrin, the active ingredient, breaks down from light. So you have to keep that gallon in the dark, like in a cabinet. Yeah. Yeah. So all things I learned this week. But I got my frontline spray in, so I'm going to use my frontline spray next. But the Nix definitely helped. Uh, I did notice when I finally put water back in with her, uh, I went in and looked the other day. There are a bunch of dead mites all around the edge of the water bowl because she crawled back in the water bowl and all the dead mites washed off of her body and down the edge of the water bowl. And now they're just dried to the side of it. So now I've got to get her out and clean the whole cage again. And I've got to give a six foot red tail a bath. Uh, but it's a pain here. I can't be like, turn the water on and clean because we don't have cold water in this house. I only have hot water. Texas. Yeah. It, it, it's a nightmare so i can't be like oh let me just turn the water on if i do i'll burn the crap out of her so i have to pour a bath for my snake let it cool off and then bathe my snake uh fucking rental houses in texas but even if i turn just the cold water on the sink hot water comes out now i'm sure in winter when i go to turn hot water on it's going to be like negative 20 degrees no it heats right up it's really funny oh it's negative 20 degrees when you first turn it on <laughs> sean grace says take her in the shower um <clears throat> that could be awkward I'll photo most things. I won't photo that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he didn't say take her in the shower while you're naked. That is that is true, but that should probably be a he probably should put that there for people. Yeah, I'm still not taking it in the shower because the shower is still 500 degrees. I'm excited that our friend James Bregoli is alive and on here commenting. Oh, is he? Yes. yes. Awesome. He's buying all the animals at Conroe. That's awesome. Yeah. Yes, James Bregoli suffered a uh, horrible. COVID, everything's horrible compared to my COVID because I didn't have anything. I feel kind of bad because mine, the only reason I know I had COVID is because the test told me so. Rumor I'm has it they had a uh, white mocha latte on an IV drip for him. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sure it was martinis. There's nothing wrong with Martinis, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah, that's Robert's that's favorite. Get bit in the balls. Yeah, yeah take a shower. <laughs> yeah, don't take a shower. Don't take showers naked with your snakes. It's the warmest spot on your body, so. Oh. <laughs> Also, uh, speaking of James, yeah. uh, it is now illegal to send lewd messages, but there's old... no law against taking somebody's phone, photographing your balls, and just leaving it on there. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. On you have fun with that one. For goal I knows. <laughs> <clears throat> I'll pass. So... Also, on our post about mites, to read some of these other ones, uh, Stephanie Martin says she dealt with it once. She was working with a couple of conventions. She <laughs> thinks that's, that's how they brought them home. Well, it just happened. It's, I mean, that many reptiles in one place, somebody that's going to have a mite or two. It's just, it happens. Um, even on the best tables. Also, people tend to show up and bring stuff, too, from their own house. Even if they don't bring the animals, sometimes they bring the mites. That's why if you're going to go somewhere where there's reptiles and you're going to be in close contact with them, and you own reptiles don't handle your reptiles first and then go just don't don't even go near your reptiles at all if you're going to a show to someone's house to see the collection nothing out of being just a decent person just go do that come home take all those clothes off clean up and then handle your animals it's just another way to try and cut down on the passage of mites because it's been a nightmare 
Uh, Stephanie says she did some research and used coconut oil uh, and kept them in quarantine, which is the same as like when I put vegetable oil on it. It just kind of uh, suffocates them. But the nicks in the front line helps with like killing the eggs, uh, which is another problem. Uh, John Grant says we treat directly after every show, no matter what show. I know because he, he has the, the Nick stuff. He sprays them uh, just so that when they come back, he's safe, which is good. Uh, Jennifer Williamson posted she purchased a ball python a few years ago from a big breeder. She had mites. It took her four months to get rid of them. Don't tell me that. That that just makes me sad. Uh, she said, I recently purchased a captive bred house snake that upon receipt looked very much wild caught because probably was because 95 percent of house snakes you find for sale are wild caught and if they tell you they're not they're probably lying especially when you go to that one table where they have like one black house snake yeah they didn't they didn't breed that shit they just <laughs> didn't that thing came from africa uh she said one treatment of preventamite knocked them smooth out uh for further leading me to believe she was wild caught and she probably was preventamite i, I used to have preventamite and in the move it was so little left in the can i threw it away yeah, that would have been helpful. Although that preventamite was probably from the last time I had mites, which again was when I was in the dorms in 2004. So it probably wasn't still good. Yeah. So it was probably good that I threw it away. So my experience real quick, I know you're going through comments, but uh, I figured I'd throw in mine. Uh, I had mites, didn't find out about it until I was in England and had somebody watch in the shop. Um, this is back when I lived in a shopping center. Um, so it was oh, a yeah. Wait, wait. You lived in a shopping center. Yeah. Um, Not like worked in a shopping center, but lived in a shopping center. Yeah, no, I, I like I was trying to run everything through there. I was supposed to have this pet shop with somebody else and they like bailed out after a month. And I was like, well, I signed a lease. And so I was like, OK, I just got a gym membership for my showers. And <laughs> I just li lived in this it. Is and I had a Max sounding story. <laughs> Well, I mean, I was like, okay, I've got to cut the overhead, and so might as well not pay rent, you know. So that was like one stage away from being homeless, Max. Well, yeah, it's <laughs> I've been homeless, so it, it, like it wasn't bad. I just had a futon in my in my office, <laughs> so uh, and then just you know all my filing cabinets just had clothes in it, and uh, so yeah, no, I, and then I was in England. And they were looking after the animals and they said, hey, you have mites. I was like, OK, well, here's the stuff to treat it. It was in the middle of the summer. I was like, hey, I'm expecting clutches. They got so freaked out that by the mites, they didn't check on the animals. Like, and Jeez. so they didn't give them water. Everyone was alive, but I had like two clutches of eggs born while they weren't like watching the animals. And I came back and I was like, cool. And your experience with animals, but... It's been a couple of years. So, I mean, like, I'm not going to name names or anything, but it was just like, kind of like, it's mites. Like, it's not going to bite you, you know? Yeah. They, they, so, also, for anybody not familiar with mites, they are animal specific. So, reptile mites are reptile mites. They're not going to affect dogs, people, birds. They affect reptiles. Just like, I don't know, head lice aren't going to affect a reptile. So, I mean, it's, they are specific. So, people do freak out about them sometimes. And, like you said, it's, it's not going to affect you. It's not going to bite you. But someone asked, uh, did I have any concerns with the mites? Because I own spiders. If you look, if you're watching live, you can see up on top of my bookshelf, way up there. Oh, there, there. My hand's going. Anyways, is my pink toe tarantula. And my jumping spiders are in the next room because, yes, I removed them. Uh, even though I was not spraying them directly and I was not spraying near them because I had sprayed so much of the NYX solution in the room. I didn't want to risk it affecting spiders because spiders and mites both fall into the same group. Um, they're arachnids. And so I didn't want it to do anything, any damage to my spiders. As far as I've seen so far, though, the spread only seems to be in my four foot cages. I have not found any in any of my racks. Um, I am going to go through and treat some of the other ones, some of the larger ones like ball pythons and stuff that are in the racks. But I haven't seen them show up in the racks, just in the four foot cages that are stacked on top of each other. And really, it's the one boa. The other ones had a few. I could tell that when I was wiping them down. They're all darker snakes, so they're not as easy to see. The boa is sun. It's a sun glow, so it's bright white, and you can see the little black specks. Uh, but that's the only place, fortunately, so far that I have seen them. That's Darren Watson asking you that. Oh, Darren. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> that was that, again. That was one of my. I actually they were sitting on this table, and then I, when I walked in here to do the podcast, I was like, I probably need to move them out of the way. Um. 
let's see. Billy Dunlap said he bought a ball python from. Should I say the name? Yeah, I'm going to. Bought a ball python from Repticon and later discovered to have mites. Used Frontline spray. Frontline is really good. Um, it's a little safer that's, than spraying your animal down with profenamite. That's a classic example of what Sean talks about. What? When someone has a bad experience with a breeder. That's they true. say I bought that from. That is true. You know, so there was the serpents. They say I bought it from Repticon. That's true. That's true. So, the, yeah, you don't know what breeder they got mm -hmm. it from. The, you know, the Reptic Repticon itself does not have mites, although I wouldn't put it past them. Well, but uh, that is true. It, it definitely is something that's negative on them. Uh, but Preventamite is a is a very strong thing, and it will definitely get rid of mites. But you can't really spray your animal down as well as you can with something like the Frontline, which is a little safer. Um, I did know, oh, was it? JT told me not to spray on... Hog, hog noses. He said that there's been a negative reaction seen in hog noses with like the Nix solution, which is the same thing as uh, Frontline. The it's permethrin, 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 meth. <laughs> meth helps kill <laughs> kill mites. A lot of people. Use, use, <laughs> use the meth. other thing you find at Repticon. <laughs> 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 oh, I didn't say that, but I was not not thinking it. Um, what are we doing this weekend and who's going to see us? It just says Facebook user. Um, is that Bergoli? I'm looking. I think I'm going to Bergoli's that house. Is Sean. Oh. That's Sean. That's Sean. Uh, you won't see Rachel probably, but it'll probably be me and Logan and Lily. Where are what are y'all doing? I got to go deliver those. Uh, uh, orders. So you can run up there if you want. Um, well, Saturday I'm going to. I was going to say, James is going to go to BuzzFest with me. Right? Oh, yeah. Oh, shit. That's right. Oh, shit. Uh-oh. Yeah, no, that's good. Okay. What, is, what day is that? Saturday. Saturday, Saturday the fourth starts at two forty for the first. Okay, weekend. so then maybe I'm not going to see the Bergolis on Saturday. Suck it, Bergolis. Wait, why would you go to the Bergolis if he has okay. COVID? Well, I'm not going to get COVID. I'm good right now. But there is Katie's going to go up there and help them out. So gotcha. And then I was going to go make fun of James because I mean he's he's an easy target and Somebody he can't run away right now. Somebody should check the effects of ivermectin on mites. Just a thought. <laughs> well, the, see, that was a thing also. So when I posted about mites, uh, or when I was, it was funny. So I had the mites thing happen, and then there seemed to be a lot of posts about mites. That apparently is a, it's, it's happening a lot to people right now. Um, people are using ivermectin. Their vets have recommended ivermectin uh, to be, and, and I've never seen it as an external thing. But John Grant said he's he's heard of it as used as an external use on on mites. I've never seen it. I'm not saying it won't work because someone had did have they had said their vet recommended it. Although we all know that if someone's not a reptile vet, yeah, sometimes the things they recommend are are not the best. Although with the uh, the ivermectin, I've heard doctors or some doctors, not all, oh no, but I'm, some doctors are are prescribing ivermectin. I personally know someone who was prescribed ivermectin and ended up in the hospital because of the ivermectin, not because of the COVID that they turned out. They that person, that doctor, should not be allowed to practice medicine again. It's been happening a lot. Nothing says help get rid of COVID like horse medicine. I'm going to make a TikTok where I'm wearing a horse mask and walking into a feed store and just <laughs> putting <laughs> Spirit out, uh, Spirit Halloween just opened up. I've got the horse mask right there if I need it. You should just, wait, excuse me. Could you point me in the direction of <coughs> ivermectin? <laughs> oh, God. Anyways, that? yay or <clears throat> nay. <laughs> <laughs> I just, you, those things happen and you hear about them, but then you hear about them happening more and more and you realize, oh shit, there's more than one really fucking dumb person. Oh, Brendan says we're treating coral for spin spinoid worms at work and can't get any because, oh, can't get any the ivermectin. Uh, yeah, because Brendan, it cures COVID. <laughs> Anyone out there that thinks it cures COVID, drink the whole bottle. It'll cure it faster. Yeah. <laughs> it, it helps stop the spread. As you literally shit your guts out. <laughs> <laughs> what are these white worms? Uh, Brandon P said that he's currently dealing with mites in a 10 slot quarantine rack. That is why you quarantine. Though. That's why I quarantine too, but it didn't work. But at least he caught it in his quarantine, and it's much easier to take care of in a quarantine rack. Than trying to play whack a mole in an entire collection to try and figure out how far the mites have spread. Um, I know I should probably treat everything. Someone said earlier, treat everything, but uh, 
I'm going to try and not. I really I don't don't want to treat my babies. I've got the baby sambos and the baby rainbows, and I'm trying not to have to treat them. Uh, we'll see how it goes. But let's get to the fun question. Let's get to Max's question this week. And when he said it, I was like, that's going to be an awesome question. And then when I found out Rachel was on here, I was like, it's even better. <laughs> <laughs> so the question was, what reptile pet names need to be retired? And basically, if it's in Rachel's collection, it's probably one of those names. We don't Actually, have. all those names that I saw, I did. I do remember reading a little bit of the post. I don't have any names. No, you don't have any of those? Not one of them. You don't have a Nagini, not one? Oh, no, because no. that's Good. the typical. Did you see what my comment was today? I know. Mine uh, named after like Sons of Anarchy characters, the Big Bang Theory, Guardians of the Galaxy. So going through them, uh, this will be fun. And then we'll get uh, Max, then I'll get your your input on, on the ones that you're tired of, which I think, no, you didn't comment on here, but we'll talk about them. Uh, Brittany Patchett, who deals with spiders, says she's tired of hearing Aragog. For anybody that watches Harry Potter, that's the big angry spider that tries to eat them. Quit naming your spiders after famous spiders. Be more original. Uh, this one showed up quite a bit. Rebel Rose said Monty Python. And I've got to admit, when I was a kid, I remember we had a ball python and its name was Monty. <laughs> uh, so, But I do not currently have any Montys. I refuse to do that. Nope. Uh, also, I don't really have much with a name. But Monty Python was definitely a popular one. Uh, she also said, <clears throat> I haven't heard anybody do this one, but I'm sure there's a million of them out there. Severus Snake. Oh, I'm sure. Uh, please don't, people. Please just, just don't. Just anything oh. Harry Potter, Harry Potter related at this point. Yes. Don't have any of that. I uh, so so speaking of naming, I have always felt that every hospital needs to have a committee that votes on a name of a kid. Like if you have a kid, you have to get the committee to a, to vote on that before you leave with that kid, so that that kid does not have to grow up with a stupid ass name. We may have to start doing that with pet snakes and lizards, because <laughs> reading some of these, I realized <laughs> someone, someone put Dumbledore. No. Uh, Layla said Iggy. There's a lot of iguanas out there named Iggy. Uh, two issues there. One, there should not be a lot of iguanas out there. And two, don't name them Iggy. Uh, Sean Gray, first one here says Nagini. The next one right after him says Nagini. Nagini has been mine <laughs> forever. Yeah. I'm like, Jesus, are we going to at least try to be a little bit original? <laughs> yeah. Name, name your snake after the evil snake that tried to kill Harry Potter. Mm -hmm. uh, Spike. Yeah, that that's that's one of those that's been around for a while. Lucifer. Lucifer. Like, seriously, why would you name an animal Lucifer or Lilith? Because you're just asking for, for to be an asshole. asshole. Yeah. Although if you ever watch the show Lucifer, he's awesome. Oh, that's a great. So show. if you're naming it after that Lucifer, it's oh, okay. Yeah, that one's good. Uh, this one I've never heard. Emily Eminette said Azula for fire skinks. I've never heard that one. Mm -hmm. But if there's a lot of fire skink people out there with that have it named Azula, you're not original. Uh, Drew Schull said Spike Blackbeard. See what Ashley just said? What I, should, I swear if I see another monitor called Toothless. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Ashley, that's on this list also. Wait, Ashley, I thought that was just imported Croc skinks and just die in a week. <laughs> no, they're, those are uh, captive born on their table for... Anyways. Uh... Smog was on here. Drew said Smog. That's that's been one I've seen. Um, Paul Byfield said Danger Noodle and Nope Rope. Those are just terms that we need to get rid of. Yeah, I hate Danger Noodle and Nope Rope. Better too. That, that one drives me nuts. Brian Hay Hayes says Nagini. <laughs> I love what you. He said Nagini. You aren't Lord Voldemort, and that's a ball python. Just stop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love. I read that one and I laughed the first time, and I'm laughing now. That's still hilarious. Uh, Lavissa said Nagini. <laughs> My dad, being a dick, said Boots. <laughs> uh, Is that where you get it from? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Angel said Echo. I've not heard a lot of Echo, but then they said uh, there's a lot of geckos named Echo, which makes sense. Echo the gecko. If you're, if you're rhyming your <laughs> animal's name with what it is, you're part of the problem. Uh, and then Brittany said she has Tegu's name, Ghost and Echo. Uh, this is not a gecko. Uh, Paul McIntyre said, and I haven't actually heard this one in a while, but this was a really popular one a long time ago. Elvis. I remember lots of things being called Elvis when I was a kid. A lot of reptiles. A lot of lizards. Alligators. Uh, Ish said Medusa, Nagini, Ka. That's Ka. Yeah, yeah that's true. And Monty. Uh, Christopher said Monty. <laughs> Lance said Boopsie and Snoot. 
that goes back with things that just need to go away. Uh, Allison said noodle, toothless. Uh, Tracy and said Pascal, for those <coughs> of you that have watched. Um, Rapunzel. But it's not Rapunzel. It's um, Why can I not think of it? It is Rapunzel, but it's not the name of the cartoon. It's um, Tangled. Tangled. Oh, Tangled. Correct. You're right. Which is an awesome cartoon, and Pascal is an awesome character in there, but just don't name your damn lizard after him. Naming your snake trouser. <laughs> All right. So Chris Duncan, I'm going to disagree because I had a snake. I had a snake named this, and he unfortunately passed away, but Reptar. I, I love Reptar because I grew up on Rugrats. Reptar was a lot more popular like four years ago. Yeah. I had, a, I had a snake named Reptar. I didn't have a lizard, so maybe that's a little better. Uh, Killian said Zilla, Smog, and Rex. There are a lot of Rexes. Uh, Stephen Bay said Onyx for, for <laughs> Black King Snakes. Quit naming your snake Onyx. Uh, and then Robert, you said Nagini, Toothless, uh, Dragon, Lieutenant. <laughs> Lieutenant Dan. I don't know. I, I'm going to go with Lieutenant Dan. I had Dan's a Lieutenant okay. Dan. Yeah. That's, that's hilarious. Or, or if uh, you like Lord of the Rings, Legolas. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's funny. Because that's not... You didn't name it after another animal that had that name. So See, one of my favorite names I've ever given an animal, it was a pied, and I and it was in 2019, and I named it Todd. Because <laughs> uh, pied Todd, Tide Pod, it just... It was funny. It, it worked with the year. Yep. It it wasn't. It's you should not. let other people decide what's funny. <laughs> 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 oh, who is that? So naming your snake trouser. Yeah, I, I'm I'm tied with that one, on 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 that one because that one's kind of funny. Uh, James Bergoli said Stevie Ray Vaughan. I didn't know that was a an issue. I think James is hanging around a, down, around a different crowd of people. <laughs> uh, Emily said anything related to Pokemon. Uh, not bad names, just overused. They are. Yeah, They're like locked. axolotls and mudkip. Yeah. I didn't think about that. I never think about mudkip being an axolotl. That's true. He is a little salamander type thing. But be more original. When you go into a name, I haven't named anything in a while. So, Rachel, you name everything. I've got a lot that's not named. I've been busy. You haven't named uh, all 50 Doom Rolls. You got, got the Power name? Rangers. You got the Little Rascals. Like, you can do series. Oh, I have series. So they are. When you go in, you look, yeah. they're, they're groups of. So my Mexican black king snakes are all named after the Adams family. We have Pugsley, Gomez, and Morticia. And then we had one given to us, and her name was Black Dahlia. And I was like, I'm not going to change it. So pro tip, if you're ever trying to like haggle, uh, maybe not haggle, but you know, you're trying, trying to like influence somebody who's selling you the animal, um, which is something I started like after I named started kind of a trend. So I started naming uh, animals after the breeder I got them from. So I have a gecko named Vargas, uh, you know, different, different things like that. Who's that named yeah. after? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> and so after that, the, the reason I started with mm. that is that the only name I'm giving them after that, it's, you know, people like the idea. Now, Robert knows this because he's read how to make friends and influence people. Mm -hmm. uh, you start naming the animal after the breeder they want that animal with you because they know it's going to be named after them. Okay. And you could probably get a couple bucks saved just by. I have to interrupt this because even though he's half dead, James Regoli just made me laugh. He had a snake with a head wobble and he called him Ray Charles. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. That's great, James. <laughs> oh, it's nice to see that COVID didn't get rid of your sense of humor, James. I mean, it's not a great sense of humor, but every now and then there's a winner. Oh, yeah, I, I don't I haven't named anything in at least 15 years. I just quit. At some point I'm just like, I can't do this. And then you're like, you, you start naming out names, and I'm like, well, what fucking snake is that? that uh, none of, there's I live only there one Doom Rolls that has a name, and that's Big Mama. But like I've heard the names and we've talked about them, and then we'll talk again, and you'll name it, and I'm like, I got nothing. I don't know what that is. I just know it's a snake yeah. in the house. It's, Sometimes it's a lizard. I don't even I'm not sure. So pretty much if it uh, has been bought within the past couple of months, it does not have a name. Yeah, see, no. at some point, it's just it's just too much. Does the box turtle have a name? Retta. Yes. Retta? That was the name she's had for 40 years. So Yeah, her original name. <laughs> you don't want, to, don't want to change. You don't want a box turtle to be confused on what its name is. Nope. Oh. Uh, I, I do have two new snakes coming in next week. I'm not naming them either. I finally got my paycheck from Texas and I could pay off. Well, hold on. That, that breeder you got it from has a first name and last name. That is true. true. 
It also does help you remember who you got him from. It's like this hat didn't prove out. And then you can go <laughs> this guy. That son of a bitch. <laughs> uh, but now I am I'm getting my uh, I'm getting my Sambo. We talked about it when Terry was on. I'm getting my my rough scale Sambo from Terry. That's coming. And then uh, we've talked about it before uh, the breeder that is it's making things right. I got the snake that was supposed to be a female. It was a male. I kept them. Uh, they finally had a female. And uh, I'm getting that one next week. And I'm getting them both delivered on the same day. So hopefully I can go to the hub and pick them both up. I don't have to drive into Houston on two different days because I just don't want to do that because it's Houston. Plus, I'll have to do it after work, which means I'll be doing it during rush hour. Busy traffic. Yeah. That sucks around here. Yeah. All right. So, Max, I want to know why the bears didn't eat you. Uh, which time? <laughs> All of them. I, so I've been watching... I've, I've since I was quarantined, I binge watched the series alone. For anybody that hasn't watched it, it's basically naked and afraid, but with clothes, and uh, and they make nicer cabins out of wood. But uh, and there's been a lot of episodes where they've been around like bears and stuff, and I was upset that none of them got eaten. And I was really hoping you would come through. And, did you watch Grizzly Man? I did, and it's the best ending to them, something <laughs> I've ever watched in my entire life. Yeah. I've never wanted someone to be eaten by a bear more. <laughs> You're a close second, but I've never been <laughs> one someone Thanks. eaten by a bear more than that guy. And when it got to the end and it said the bears killed him, I, I audibly cheered. I was so happy that he done it. And I know that sounds people are going to be like, he's happy that somebody died. I need you to watch all of Grizzly Man and not want that guy dead by the time you get to the end of it. Because have you seen it? You I seen haven't, it. no. I'm well, telling it, you, in Alaska, you know, you, you talk to most people and – it, the, the attitude is that was one of the questions I had was I was like, what's the attitude if somebody gets attacked by a bear? Like, is it like, oh, no, like, or is it they shouldn't have been doing that? And they basically everyone told me they shouldn't have been doing that. Yeah, because up there, they're like we live with them and we don't get eaten. Right. And they told me the last guy who got eaten was just jogging, had his headphones in. And it's like they were like, shouldn't have had his headphones in. Yeah, fuck that. <laughs> I, so on the recent season of Alone. They get there. They get dropped off. The guy's sitting there making a fire, and he goes, what's that? And he looks up, and there's a fucking cougar staring at him. That's the moment where I'm like, I think it's time to leave, guys. I know we just got here, but I'm going to go ahead and head out. How about the guy? You're watching this season now? Yeah. How about the guy who started crying on day one because he thought he was having a heart attack? Granted, he had had a heart attack. Yeah, but they got out there, and they're like, uh, pretty sure it's just gas. <laughs> but we're here, so you're a You got to go home. Right. Uh, but yeah, like. Some of those are the Who are your choices to win so far. I don't know. I keep falling asleep, so I haven't really steadily watched it. Because I come home after school and I turn it on and then I pass out and it automatically plays through like three episodes. Because I watched it. Don't tell me. Every week. Don't tell me. Because I'm going to watch it. It's an awesome show. The guy that won season seven, you knew he was going to build season seven, win season seven when you saw him build a fucking house mm -hmm. in the Arctic and kill a muskox with he a knife. He killed a muskox with a knife. Nice. Well, he, he shot, shot it, it with a bow, he slowed it down. He killed it with he a killed, knife. Yeah, he finished it with a knife. Anybody that hasn't watched Alone, season seven at least is on Netflix. And that's the season where the guy kills a fucking muskox with a knife. And it's not like this giant knife. It's like just slightly bigger than a pocket knife. And he slows it down with an arrow. And then he just takes turns running in and stabbing it and running off. And running in and stabbing it and running off. And he kills a muskox. Mm -hmm. You didn't do that shit, Max. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> fucking so pussy. Prob probably like... The craziest thing that happened is I was photographing a bear that was on a beach. You know, most of my time was on the river because that the salmon are concentrated. You have a lot of success with the bears. Now it's not, you know, all in all, I think I, I didn't go to Katmai. So I didn't see, you know, as many bears as, you know, some people do like 50 bears. I saw about a dozen bears, but I saw them regularly. So you get very familiar with each bear, you know, the mama bear and the three cubs, the two brothers, the navel collar bear, which was a very curious bear. And he's right there at that age where he's like, is he going to be aggressive or not? But I was out in the flats where, you know, it's nice, open, you know, there's a bear, a ton of cars are pulled over on the side of the road. And the everyone has a the bear can chase you down easier. <laughs> well, you can see if the bear's running at you sooner. Um, but we we were looking out, you know, photographing this bear. It was pretty far away. I had my teleconverter on, you know, my 600. So all in all, it was about at 1,200 millimeters. So I was getting better shots than most people. But, you know, all in all, it was just kind of far away. So most people left. And then some people pulled up because the bear, like, had fallen asleep behind a small patch of grass, which in, it's kind of crazy to think about 
how small of grass they could hide behind when you're out there driving through and you're look out there looking for bears. And he, I mean, he just fell asleep, roll over and was just doing his thing. And nobody could tell where he was unless you say, oh no, he's right there. It's like, oh, okay, I can kind of see him. But we're photographing this bear, you know, cause he starts moving again. And then this bear start. somebody said, hey, there's a bear right there. And we look over and this bear is just crossing from one patch of grass to the other patch of grass. And he's kind of like foaming at the mouth, not like rabid, but like he was stressed. And so it was like a bigger bear than him. And he, he was a bigger bear than the one on the beach. So I was like, oh, okay. So a bigger bear than him had pushed him out. And I was like, okay, so he's stressed. He walks from one brush across the street into the other brush. This car had stopped. So I got this really cool picture of him crossing the road <laughs> with the uh, car just right there in the foreground. And then that car passes by and another car comes back towards us. And it, it was going slower for whatever reason. I guess it saw everyone stopped and it planned on looking out at the beach or whatever. And the bear runs back out from the brush, runs, charges a car, gets his paw ran over, bites the mirror, gets shoulder bite and like push sideways. And nobody else there, because I would ask people, it's like, hey, you got you have bear spray, you know, just to know if like I can head up the way. Nobody else had bear spray. And so this bear gets shouldered by a car, was foaming at the mouth, stress. I just ran at this car, and I got photos of that too. Um, I'll try and find them while I ramble on. But after he does that, I, I, I'm I the one who goes, everyone get back. <laughs> like I pull out the pepper spray ready. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. <laughs> like, if I see you in public and you're the guy warning me, I'm saying, fuck that. <laughs> So I I like, and I'm ready to do it. And the bear just gives me this look and then like turns and he kind of limps away, which is good because we saw him later and he he was walking just fine. But I kind of think about it later on. And I was like, my plan was this spray. And when I looked into how to use bear spray, somebody said, you know, somebody on there said, oh yeah, it's the most effective deterrent. It's 90% effective. And I was like, 90% doesn't sound like a lot. When <laughs> it's you versus bear, you, you but can take a bear max, it's just uh, it's just a grizzly bear. Well, it's I mean they're five feet tall when they're on all fours. On all fours, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, asked, is it legal to fire on a charging bear? Yes, uh, and in fact, I had my gun on me, but I told everyone that. I would not be using that unless the bear spray didn't work, which probably means I'm not in the greatest of shape. Yeah. But I'm just going to find it. On the problem is by the time the bear spray doesn't work, I don't know if you have time to get the gun. I do know that I would be messed up because, you know, you, you have the 21 foot rule and I'm sure that's a lot, like a lot longer if, uh, yeah, the, if it's the... not a human. Yeah, the Twelia rule applies to human speed, not yeah. bear speed. Not 45 mile an hour right. running bear for, speed. For anybody who doesn't know what that is, the accepted practice is if you have someone who's armed with like an edge weapon and they have to be more than 21 feet away from you when they start charging you for you to be able to effectively draw and and put them down oh, wow. Hold on, Max. without getting stabbed. Max has got a picture. I'm going to make it full screen so we can... Oh, that, that's a bear that's attacking a car. Crazy. That's oh. just think what they would do to your little fragile body. I'm not, that bear thought he had a chance too. He was like, Fuck anybody this seen car. the revenant? That's crazy. Uh, and so one of these, and my sister has photos of me doing the whole, you know, get back thing. <laughs> but cool thing about the bear spray is I borrowed it from a coffee shop. <laughs> the coffee I'm shop there just loads out bear spray. <laughs> And I was glad I had it. So that was the first, or that was the second time I had to draw it, though. So what was the first time? So the first time it wasn't like super extreme. It was the naval collar bear, the guy, the bear that was a pretty curious bear, and the fishermen. I I caught them on video. You know, I'm not gonna like make that super YouTube sensationalist title. It's like catching fishermen feeding bears or whatever. Like basically, they were just throwing their scraps in the river and they shouldn't have. And this bear, I'd been photographing all week. Like when I first landed in Alaska, I wanted to see a bear so bad. I started calling men bald. Um, and that's only funny if you read the Old Testament. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. Remember how we said not everything you think is funny is funny? That falls. Have you read the that. Old Testament? No, no. Okay. Has the atheist read the Old Testament? No. 
Okay, so basically, like, uh, children call this man bald, and they're like, run up, baldy, run up, baldy, and he summons a bear from the forest. Or, no, he, he curses them in the name of God, and a bear comes and kills 42 children. So is that why they call bald men bears? No. <laughs> oh, okay. Just making, just, just checking. I don't know what you've been watching. <laughs> <laughs> so, back to your so, your fisher. Okay. So, um, so anyway, I I've been like I've you know you talk to the locals as a photographer, <laughs> you're gonna figure out where the bears are, and it was the river right actually right by the airport. Um, and I mean the whole island only has less than fifty miles of road road roadway, and I mean there's over like there's more bears than square miles in Kodiak. And so I went and I was watching this bear. I photographed him over the course of like two days. And then because he was realizing he could run off fishermen and the fishermen were leaving their fish, you're supposed to take your stuff, not throw scraps because of irresponsible fishermen over like the course of like 24 hours, this bear's attitude had really changed. And so I was there, it was a group of people and one of them was a volunteer with uh, Parks and Wildlife. And, you know, like these people, again, they know these bears, you know, if if they work around the river, you know, mm. they they can distinguish each bear. And uh, so this bear, like he, I got some really cool photos of him. Let me see if I have the one. So uh, this is a bear here. And this this was a photo I got during the whole incident. And he like he just walked up and he was really curious and he was not bothered by us at all you know he he <coughs> just wanted to walk up and it he it, it, there's just a certain distance you need to maintain from bears and he he just broke that by a lot and so people were like throwing rocks near him of course we were all yelling and i just i pulled my pepper spray just in case it like th when you use uh bear spray you have like two lines of like how you use it. You don't just directly like spray them in the eyes. First of all, in case there's a draft or a wind, you kind of spray a wall to where they can run into that and like realize, okay, I, I want them to do with this and leave. And then of course, if they keep coming, you know, you, you uh, hit them in the face or the nose and, uh, but yeah, you spray it in a wall and it just got to that point, but he got really close. I mean, he's a very awesome bear. Like he, he's a very curious bear. Um, but it was, that was just the other incident. I, I pulled my bear spray, but I would say all in all, the closest I got to the, a bear wasn't that it was actually the mama bear, which is typically the last bear you want to get closest to you. But I was sitting there, it was, uh, waiting on sunrise and she, there was a path that I walked down and I was expecting her because the, the bears, they, they, they're pretty habitual, you know, animals just in general, they follow the same patterns because what works for them, you know, keeps them alive. And I'm sitting there and I'm waiting for her to come up river towards the, uh, towards the pump house. And then, you know, of course they, they make the journey twice in a day, once in the morning, once in the evening. Well, apparently she had already been to the pump house early that morning. And I, <clears throat> I'm sitting there waiting to film. And of course I, I have this on video and I hear this cracking in the woods. So I turn around and I just wait. And she, instead of sneaking up on me and walking up on me, she knew I was there. So instead, because she had her three cubs, she just walked through the forest. And these bears, you know, they're not like the black bears. They're not like the Yellowstone bears. Like they're not, they, they have fish to keep them occupied. You know, like in Yellowstone, those bears will, you know, they're, they're more likely to go at you because I guess they're bored or whatever. But uh, but yeah, instead of walking up on me, you know, she just took her cubs to the river. And at that point, you know, she turned around kind of, she was huffing. So you see her breath there and, uh, calling her cubs, you know, back across the river, but, uh, awesome backlit shot right there at sunrise. And so that, that and of course I, I filmed it on my phone. I filmed it on the, the two cameras. So I had two cameras, the phone trying to work all that and also bear spray, you know, sometimes in the middle of it, but those were my three closest encounters. Um, but I mean, I've got tons of stuff where I was sitting there in the rivers with them. I got a cool photo there. Let me go back this way. Um, to where one of the bears is just hanging out in the river. And I was downstream from him. I, I threw my, uh, 
I, I threw my lens all the way down to 600 millimeters and then he's just fishing. He just stick his face in the water and look for fish and eventually grab one. And then he just looks up at me and I love that image. It's just cause you know, it, you know, the, the bears really don't care about people in the sense, like they want to bother people, you know, they, they just want to fish and do their thing. But it, I mean, it, it was really cool to get, you know, pictures like that to actually like that. I feel like captured the, experience more than a lot of cell phone photos and videos do is this your first time around grizzlies uh yeah were they larger than what you expected uh yes uh so the uh kodiak brown bear is the largest brown bear subspecies in the world so they were big and in fact the walmart there had a stuffed one and i mean uh like the paw itself is of course bigger than your hand and it stands tall um, I like that Walmart. It's the only Walmart I came for, uh, just for the fact that a couple years ago, the rapper, uh, Pitbull, he had a contest online and he said, Hey, uh, whatever Walmart gets the most votes, I'm going to go perform a concert at internet being the internet, sent him to the small or the Walmart with the smallest population, <laughs> which was in Kodiak. <laughs> and he went there and Pitbull played a concert. That's awesome. So... But the whole island only has like 13,000 people on it. Um, and I, just, I mean, I wonder how many people come up there never being around grizzly bears or, or bears. And they assume that it's like fucking Disney World. They assume if they get there, the bears will eat. They can do whatever they want. The bears won't mess with them. But they don't eat people. And you just wonder how many people just get way too fucking close all the time because they assume that the bears are like trained animals. Did you see people right. getting way too close on a regular basis? Uh, so there was a couple instances. Uh, one instance, th there was this photographer um, that would like follow the ma mama bear and three cubs. And she was a local and uh, Parks and Wildlife does not like her at all. Uh, <laughs> and uh, and people were yeah, worried I'll, that, I'll, you know, she was going to upset the bear and the bear was going to turn around and attack a tourist who didn't know any better. Alaska Fish and Game does not mess around. No, in fact, uh, she was messing around in the brush, like rather than sticking to the trails, and they thought she was a bear. And there's this weir there where they count the fish to regulate the salmon coming in. Mm -hmm. And uh, because she was like, they took a bean bag and a shotgun and they shot it at her. <laughs> 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 yeah. Well, uh, the Alaska. No, no, fuck that. They knew she wasn't a the bear. The Alaska Game Wardens are state troopers. Oh really? Yeah, that's just a division of their state troopers. So, did you see them out there and about most uh, most of the time? Which is kind of, I guess, more watching oh, people yeah. and the and, bears. And, well, and they have cameras out there too. So I stuck my phone underwater to film the salmon, and they were like, one of them comes up to me and he goes, "I got a guy like that looked a lot like you, looking like he was trying to catch salmon with his hands." And I was like, "No, I was just filming him." And he goes, "Okay, he looked a lot like you." Basically saying it was me. I was like, "Oh yeah, no, here's the <laughs> photo and video I got." And uh, he goes, yeah. I, he goes, well, if you see anyone, let me know because uh, that's a ticket. I was like, oh, really? You know? And he goes, yep, molesting the fish. <laughs> <I was like, laughs> I'm from Texas. Like people who molest things aren't allowed to live. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so no, no molesting uh, the fish in Alaska. <laughs> yeah, but I, I mean, like walking through and then you know filming them. You know, they touch like your hands and they are smooth. Like you couldn't grab them if you wanted to. Not even the fact like how strong they are. But like there's like it's like grabbing water itself, you know. They are so smooth. Like the fact that the bears do it is like how they do it is amazing. <laughs> so were you, were you there during the run, or were they just a lot of yeah, salmon the, there? Yeah, the, the run. So the uh, uh, in fact, the salmon were a little bit late this year, but uh, yeah, no. I mean, I, I flew my drone um, in in the Alaska video that I'll have coming out as soon as I get back from Boston. It uh like flying your drone, you see fishermen, and then you just see schools of fish sticking my phone underwater, just fish, 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 like millions, and they taste amazing. <laughs> so for the first couple of days there, I, I like I was eating salmon, 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 and then like there's wild blueberries and salmon berries, and I was picking those off of bushes. I was like, heck yeah, this is all I'm gonna eat. I'm gonna be in great shape. And then I saw bear shit, and I was like, oh, <laughs> maybe I should eat some bread. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, uh, Darren Watson asked, did you stay in a tent or in a cabin? So what originally started this trip was my cousin, like my, my mom's cousin. So my uh, second cousin or cousin once removed or whatever, um, he found us on Ancestry. 
And like, of course, he was like, hey, come up anytime. And in, I think that was early 2020. And I was like, oh, yeah, you know, it'd be a cool trip one day. And then 2020 happened and I canceled a lot of my trips and I really got cabin fever. And so he's like, yeah, you got a house to stay in and a truck to drive. And so I go up there expecting to meet him. I don't. I meet his daughter, which is like, and she's cool. Like she was our host. She's 16, not expecting to host my sister and I, because I just, uh, what I did was I just used my uh, stimulus check uh, to pay for my tickets. I'm just like wrote it off like I never got it. I was like, my tax return, my job, you know, I pay my bills, you know, so on and so forth. And so they like my stimulus check was my stupid money. And so I bought the ticket, you know, like seven months in advance, eight months. some, And then anyway, so I stayed at his place, but I didn't meet him because he got stuck on a fishing boat in Valdez. So I never met him the whole time I was there. And then his keys were with the dock master. So I didn't drive a truck or an SUV. I drove a Mini Cooper. <laughs> <laughs> you were the same Which, size as the bears. Uh, the bears were bigger. <laughs> So just imagine a bear running out and flipping that Mini Cooper and just max inside of it. <laughs> Bears are strong enough to take car doors off. Like they are. <laughs> I can't imagine. I mean, I guess I'm not used to it, but having to go to the mechanic and like, what happened? Well, you see what happened is a bear charged me and ripped my mirror off. <laughs> when I land in, in Anchorage, because Alaskans, they have this mindset. You know, for me, it was all Ford and like everything was, whoa. Um, but, you know, I, I when I landed there, I got on iNaturalist. Uh, in Anchorage, and I was like, what's the closest moose to the airport? I was like thinking, could I leave and, you know, go find a moose while I was in Anchorage? And I started seeing blue dots inside, like, the airport. <laughs> and, like, <laughs> like moose will just get on, like, where you drop people off. So it's like, well, guess nobody's getting their Uber because there's just a moose there, you know. <laughs> and <laughs> But, uh, but yeah, no, like, the, the bears were, I mean, just – like there, there was just a couple instances. I, I did see the one get his paw ran over. I, I saw him the next day. He was fishing and running around just fine. Um, I think I did the caption contest where I showed the two bears. Um, let's see. I saw sea lions, seals. I'm just gonna go and flip oh, yeah. through here. Um, that okay. That snake couldn't have been Alaska, was it? Nope. Uh, <laughs> I I was just trying. I realized that I photo snakes. In the wild, in, in a studio session, I'll, I'll turn to portrait rather than landscape. But in the wild, I always go landscape. And I never had, I didn't have a good crop to submit for that uh, magazine cover. So I actually didn't submit any snake photos for the magazine cover for the Crikey magazine. Um, it, it was just made, like, it was mainly bears and I think just that readier slider. But, um, but yeah, there's two of the three cubs right there. Um, let's see. Now, oh, a mom and three cubs. Oh, my mouse is doing double clicking thing. Nah, that's a puffin. Is that a puffin? Yeah. yeah. That's cool. They have puffins in Alaska. Uh, yeah, they were actually about to leave before I uh, before I left. So I guess they I were would, about to migrate. I always um, talk about how puffins are better than penguins. They Why? can fly because they can fly and swim oh, underwater. Yeah. Penguins, their fat asses can only swim. And they publish books. That's in Seattle. Oh, that's a big ass bear. Yeah, no. Um. Well, and the only reason this one, this one's the, uh, this one's the landscape version of the photo. The only reason I don't think this one's gonna win. I think it's a gorgeous photo. I really like the personality in her eyes. But you got nipples right there. Yeah. You and do. I just, I don't think you know Robert Irwin is gonna go. You know, blimey, mm. <laughs> those, those belong on a magazine cover. Oh, I just, that's, you know, we're spoiled down here because we have black bears and really they're pussies when it comes to bears. Yeah. I mean, you could, the whole thing is if a black bear charges you, put your hands above your head and look big and then it will just run away most of the time. Yeah. The grizzly yeah. bears, I watch. So, like, when I'm watching the shows and they're up there on alone and they're just like, hey, bear, hey, bear, I'm like, I'm not using that as my defense to get rid of grizzlies. <laughs> hey, bear just does not seem like it's going to do enough. You know, and I always tell folks, between black bears, grizzlies, and polar bears. You know, black bears, you can tend to scare them off. Uh, grizzly bears, if they attack you, you curl up and play dead, and you hope it doesn't eat you. And then polar bears, you're fucking dead. It doesn't matter yeah, at that no point. Bears. So, but and then you, another fun fact that um, I don't think a lot of people know about, you know how, like, in Texas, we have, like, deer skulls and lo longhorn skulls, cow skulls, stuff like that. 
in Alaska, they just have whale bones. Just here's an archway of whale ribs. That's crazy. So, because if you I guess, see any of that, any whales or anything while you're up there? When I went kayaking, I heard a doll's porpoise. Didn't see it, but if you know anything about them, they just like they basically like come up and then they're down, and then they'll just pop up somewhere else random. You know, humpbacks. Uh, I'm flying out to Boston at five forty-five tomorrow morning. So after this podcast, I'm driving to Dallas. I will. Uh, I'll see a <laughs> bunch of humpbacks. So Jamie from the Texas Sea Life Center, when I went to uh, help uh, release the thousand sea turtles that I did there, uh, nine hundred, and then loaded up a thousand more. Uh, or no, a hundred more to uh, go with the U.S. Coast Guard. So a thousand, yeah, yeah. Anyway, so uh, she said, "Hey, yeah, no, I'm I'm going up to uh, Boston to do whale watching. So you want to come?" <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I was like, don't say ha ha. I'm I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> so actually, uh, Alana, uh, no drama, llama actually bought the plane ticket. They sponsored that video, and I was like, dope. That's awesome. So, yeah. So I've got to. Uh, I also have some used stuff I'm going to give them for their shop. and um, But yeah, no shout out to them for getting me that plane ticket. Because then Jamie turned around and bought me concert tickets. Like, I guess there's an after party that the band is DJing. So if you were ever into emo music, it's the story so far and all time low. And so a lot of those pop punk bands. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> my little punk side gets to come out. I can. So you said you're kayaking and you heard it. I can I vouch that if you're kayaking in the middle of nowhere and you hear anything come up and blow air, it'll make you almost shit yourself. <laughs> well, I mean, it, been, was just, it was far away, but no, I, I can attest to the same. Oh, I've been fishing in the marsh in Louisiana. You'll be fishing and all of a sudden dolphins will just show up and all you hear is like right next to you and you shit yourself for a second. You're like, what the hell was that? And That's then you realize it was dolphins dolphin. rape people. <laughs> they do well the worst part is you're like oh cool it's a dolphin then you're like oh fuck i'm fishing i'm not gonna catch any fish now because there's a fucking dolphin so also am i louder or quieter i can you're good okay so uh everyone told me in uh, alaska oh come back in the springtime because then you can see the orcas and they'll punt seals and i was like what fucking <laughs> awesome <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So, yeah, no. Uh, orcas, I'm like, I understand being scared of dolphins, but uh, I'd be really scared of orcas. I Fun fact today, I taught my kids, they didn't know this, that orcas are dolphins. They are mm -hmm. the largest species of dolphin. They're not a whale. We were all lied to by Free Willy. Uh, but they are a very large species of dolphin. And, yeah, the, the, well, i always known they were creepy, especially when you watch Shark Week and they talk about those ones, like the two brother orcas that go around just eating the fucking livers out of great white sharks. Mm -hmm. That's how you know that that you don't want to fuck with an orca. These two are just traveling the world like, hey, let's go eat some great white shark liver. And there's just a bunch of dead great white sharks washing up on shore. And the only thing missing is a liver. What's that dude on TikTok? I, I don't remember his name. Um, also, am I quiet, loud? You're good. Okay, uh, I don't I don't know his name, but like he he he's like you know this uh you know th this ten ton seal panda will just you know go up and check a great white shark. He talks he's on TikTok and he's hilarious, uh, but I mean he talks about moose and he talks about animals in such like a creative way of like how dangerous they are. Yeah, um, I bet you if I just type in orcas, yeah, first response orcas are animal logic. Robert's the TikTok person. But yeah, Just this guy. TikTok. Oh. Whoa. But yeah, th that's him talking about how, you know, orcas just disrespect uh, great white sharks. <laughs> <laughs> that's also a craziness. Like, that they are so smart to realize, hey, we can get just the liver and we know exactly where to bite this giant fish to eat just its liver. So, Thanks. animals so, are weird. How old were you? when until like you realize like that big white circle wasn't their eye well i watched free willy when i was a kid so there was close-ups of his eye yeah. i didn't have a kid today with a picture on the wall on, on the board he goes where's the eye and i pointed to like the black part of his face and they're like i was like it's a black eye on a black face it's very hard to see i just just trust me it's right there in this spot i just remember being like a kid like three years old and just like i didn't sing free willy but i guess i skimmed it but just thinking that big circle was just their eye for whatever reason I could see that though. You're also a dumb kid. I'm sure. I mean, I didn't say it out loud, did I? 
You did. Oh, shit. I was there. I'm still upset that the Bears didn't eat Max. <laughs> I mean, Max, like Max. Max, I'm, I'd have been glad. sad. I'd have missed you. But it would have been a great story. My right. kid really likes Max, so. I was going to say, yeah. Actually, I uh, I bragged on Logan uh, not too long ago. Oh, yeah? So uh, there, somebody told me, like, hey, at Conroe, I don't have employees. And I was like, talk to Logan. He works hard. <laughs> so Awesome. And so, they were like, no, I'm too shy. I don't want to talk to people. I was like, how are you going to? So. <laughs> so Emily asked, are livers good or something? Is oddly specific to just go for the liver? Yeah, it's, it's extremely nutritious. Uh, and it's very large on a shark. It's a, They have a very large liver. Um, and so it's a good source of fat and a lot of nutrition. And somehow these handfuls of orcas have figured out where it's at and how to get exactly to the liver and said, fuck the rest of the shark. We don't need it. And they eat just the livers. And they've seen it in two orcas in South Africa. And they believe it's the same two orcas off the coast of California that are doing it. They saw it a year or two later, uh, watched them come up and take it out of the side of a shark. Well, I mean, at least it's nutritious, you know, unlike, <laughs> unlike shark fin soup. Yes. You know, yeah, where it's just, you know, just pseudoscience. That's, I also so I talked about proteins in class today. And we talked about... Um, you know, hair and nails are proteins. And then talk about how the fact that proteins are also how some animal, animals are going extinct, like the rhino. You know, everybody kills the rhino for the horn, which you basically could just eat your own hair and get the exact same nutrients you would from a rhino horn because it's made of the exact same stuff. But rhino horns make you horny. They make your dick hard, apparently. Yeah. Fucking, I hate people. Those people need to take some ivermectin. <laughs> It's just gonna be some glyphosate or whatever. What do you mean round, those drink some Roundup. Yeah, Round, it intravenously. Tell them Roundup makes your dick hard. <laughs> <laughs> and if you chase it with ivermectin, it makes, it makes it the round part go up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, people are stupid. Aren't glad you sat in on this one, Rachel. Oh, it's always a blast listening to everything that goes on. So. I do want to hit on some stuff. Uh, there was there was one story that came out this week that Max sent me that I think is fucking hilarious. <laughs> and Max, after I watched it, Max and I both had the exact same thought. So it was a story out of Slidell, Louisiana. Um, they had all these floodwaters come through because of the storm surge. And this woman said her husband went out. He lived in an elevated house, went out, went down. It was flooding. And he got attacked and pulled in by an alligator, and it ripped his arm off. She couldn't get to him, so she got into a Piro, a boat, went for help, came back. They couldn't find the body. And Max and I both have the same assumption. She fucking killed her husband. I believe this woman's killed her husband and has now said the alligator did it. And so, Max, what did Louisiana, you want to call it? Louisiana Carol Baskin. <laughs> <laughs> Blame the alligator. Killed her husband, whacked him. That's right. <laughs> but, yeah, I saw that story. to me. Yeah, luckily it was Slidell, not Stafford, because, you know, otherwise they're going to assume it's an escaped animal from a herp show. Yeah. <laughs> did, y'all, did y'all leave a full-grown alligator here? I feel like this, I feel like this full-grown alligator we came We didn't find it for seven months, and they're native here. But, uh, did you put this 14-foot alligator inside this loaded dock <laughs> and leave it? Yeah. Damn it, uh, Russ. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, that, that, was the, uh, that was the weirdest story that came out of the hurricane. Man eaten by alligator. And in reality, man killed by wife and fed to alligator. But uh, also, I listened to several podcasts. So now living like 30 minutes away from work, I get to listen to podcasts. And so I've listened to several podcasts uh, over the last week. Speaking of alligators, I listened to the Animals to the Max podcast. To the what? And the animal is not you. <laughs> Different. Uh, this is Corbin Maxi. But uh, he had, and I don't, so I don't know this person. Um, but I heard them their her name on uh, Reptile Talk with um, why can't, why, Rob, with Rob with Rob Christian. But Savannah from Gatorland, uh-huh. uh, he talked about her, and then she was Rob, on. Rob Christian has a snake named Monty, by the way. Fucking fuck you, Rob. But he's had him since he was like sixteen. Anyway, go ahead. You say that like that's a long time ago. Rob's not that old, right? <laughs> but uh, on Animals to the Max, they had Savannah on from Gatorland. It was very interesting to listen to her talk about working with uh more and specifically the big um uh, saltwater croc and how smart it was and that it learns the different keepers and it learns and that they when they feed them they they don't feed them the same mm-hmm. way every time 
because if they did, then the crocodile learns what they're doing, and then the crocodile will learn how to get them. And so they feed it differently every time, and they've watched how it'll it'll move around. And I've worked with crocodiles, so they were they're kind of talking about alligators versus crocodiles. So going back to the bears, we're spoiled by having the really sissy black bears not having to deal with grizzly bears on a regular basis. We're also spoiled by having alligators instead of crocodiles, unless apparently you're in Slidell and it floods and it pulls your husband into the water. But they talk about the difference between dealing with uh, alligators, which I've, I've dealt with both. And, and really, I've, I've never been like, oh, no, I'm horrified of this alligator because they're kind of easy to scare off, especially if you've ever seen one in the wild. And uh, in captivity, they just kind of come up and take the food and they go off and they do alligator things. And she talks about the crocodile being much smarter. Uh, you know, if they turn their eyes to look away, and that's the moment the crocodile starts to make a move towards them. Whereas, like, if it's an alligator, that, that thing's just going to keep sitting there waiting for you to feed it. Um, and I've seen that. I've, I've dealt with Nile crocodiles where I was, I turned away for a second, and then it came launching at me. Uh, so it was a very interesting listen to hear her talk about dealing with these giant saltwater crocodiles. But we have we know someone, we're not going to say who, <coughs> who has about an eight or nine foot Nile that will crawl out of its little pond and lay in his lap. Yeah, fuck that. But he's had it since it was a hatchling. Yeah, and it, you know that's true. Um, Still a wild animal. Yes. Yeah. I, I, I look after having a Nile launch at my face and trying to eat me. I was like, ah, I'm good. I don't. I don't want to be around John anymore. Although we had a huge American croc, and we had an understanding. He'd be pissed at first, but once you got him away, he was like, all right, do what you got to do, and then get the hell out of here. Uh, I also found it funny. She talks about they don't go in and do anything in the pen alone. That was not the rule when I worked at a zoo. I had to do all of that stuff alone for the most part. I would love to have had backup when crocodiles were sneaking up behind me. So here, here's a post in the National Snake Bite Support Group that just popped up. Oh, great. I know oh, it's I secondhand think. information. My brother-in-law was bit by a baby copperhead a couple of days ago. He refused to go to the ER or doctor. It was on his belly after being this long. What are the worst that can happen to him? I read that word for word without with the <laughs> lack of punctuation. What's the worst? Uh, you can fucking die. You can die. I mean, do you want to know what the worst is? is the worst. <clears throat> uh, I love that one because that's going to be like no one is allowed to answer except for the professionals. Right. And you really want to be like, you're an idiot. You just want to say that. Just like right. tell him to go to the goddamn doctor. <laughs> but you know, uh, that is what it is. I also got a chance to listen to some Morelia Python radio. I listened to the natural history series. They do they do a couple episodes where they do natural history on a certain species, and this one was on black headed pythons. Uh, and it was very interesting to listen. Um you know, we always a, a lot of people when you hear about black headed pythons, you hear about how much they are snake eaters, and then you put them together, they could eat each other. Because I've always been told that. But listening to it and listening to them talk, that's really not that common. Uh, no one has really had black headed pythons eating other black headed pythons, even though in the wild they do eat other snakes and lizards. Uh, but after listening to it, I want a black headed python again. I, I was pretty good, but now I want a black headed python. So I need Jim Sargent to make more black headed pythons, and then I need to win the lottery so I can buy it. What's cool about blackheads is they've held their value for a very long time. Yeah. Like they are so consistent in cost. Well, you can't get new ones here legally. Yeah. So, <laughs> but they, yeah. but they are awesome. I also listened to, I re listened, actually, I listened to part of this podcast uh, because Travis Wyman posted it over in our uh, discussion group. It was the Snake Talk uh, podcast. Um, it was snake diseases with Dr. James Willahan, uh, which was pretty good. And uh, talking about quarantine and how important that is, uh, which I I know, and I still got mites. But I like the snake talk one. It's a lot. Of, it's a very uh, sometimes it gets very technical, especially when he has a lot of doctors on there. It gets very technical, so sometimes it can be a little hard to follow. But it is a pretty good reptile podcast. Um, so check that one out too. And then what was it? Speaking oh. of quarantining, yes. uh, real quick, don't you love it when you're at a show in like October and people are going around looking for females? They're like, "Yeah, I'm getting ready for breeding season." I'm like, yeah. "No, yes. you don't plan on quarantining." I saw in World of Ball Pythons just today a very well-known YouTuber oh doing his first unboxing video in a snake room. In a snake room. I'm like, "Well, you have." Been on probably 500 snakes in there. Hopefully that one doesn't have Nido or oh. mites or whatever else. But it looks cool standing in front of all your racks. I got a green screen. So, I mean, yeah. 
Let's yeah, this this wasn't a green screen. He was turned around, <laughs> open at tubs. Now I'm wondering who it is. Oh, I can't think of his name, but he posts a lot in the group. Ah, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm amazed at this point in the hobby how little people still pay attention to quarantine, even though now it's even bigger than ever. Now we know so many things that do affect our animals, and people still don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. Um. I did watch a video this week. I posted it. I sent it to y'all too. I know you didn't watch it, but I but I'll explain it. It's from uh, Reptiles and Research, which is a, a guy out of the UK. But it was basically about uh, the <clears throat> is it humane to basically allow a snake to kill a rodent, or is it more humane to gas a rodent? Um, and I guess I was the wrong person to kind of watch it because I was kind of like, I, I, either way, I don't really fucking care because it's a rodent. Not that I want the rodent to suffer, but I'm like. It dies and feeds my snake. I don't care. And he talks about uh, there's a certain way to gas rodents where you can make it a little less humane, but rodents suffer a lot of stress before they die because of uh, because of the way they're gassing and they're losing air and this or that. And I was like, yeah, I get it. And I get the idea. I also found it weird coming from someone in the UK where they're not allowed to feed live stuff. I'm like, all your shit has to be gassed. Well, yes and no. Well, in extre there extreme cases. But, yeah. but for the most people, you have to feed them gassed. Yeah. But uh, there were all these studies on uh, how rodents in groups, when they are being gassed, uh, they stress and the other ones feed off of that stress. And I get it. I don't want to torture them, but it is the best option, I think, for doing that. So it was just speaking an interesting of, video. Speaking of studies, James, I just sent you a link. I'm not sure if you'd seen it yet. Uh, king cobras are not a single species. Yeah, um, uh, Jason miller Radovich posted that. In yeah. our group earlier today. So, um, but yeah, no, they are not uh, monotypic, <laughs> monotypic. Um, but there are more than one species of king cobra across its ranges, which uh, I'm not the most familiar on, on king cobras, but I knew that the Chinese ones kept their bands their whole life. And yeah. so they were the prettiest ones, but they're also the hardest to find. They're also, I forget how it is, but they're not like a true cobra. They're not in the same group as like Naja, like all the other stuff, like the African cobras right. and stuff. It's a completely different group. They they Them just and also forest cobras next. are not true cobras or woodland. One one of the two. Yeah. It's been a while since I looked into that. But with that said, they're still cool because it's a fifteen foot venomous snake that can stand up six yeah, feet. Yeah, and air. right. So one third of the body length. It's like when it's when you're looking at a king and they're looking at you head on. You know, that's that's a different experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That again, reasons I have never worked with uh, elapids. They're they're smart, they're fast, and some of them are really really big. I'd much rather deal with big fat lazy vipers. Yeah, and I know someone out there is going, "Well, vipers are." Fat. I get that, but I can I can read a viper much better than I can read something that is literally reading me. At least get a boom slang. No, I'm good. So you can go to go to Rick's and... house and mess with all of his bushmasters. Oh, he's got some nice. I got my Insulars from him, and yeah, oh, like I got back after Alaska, and that that was just a treat when I got back because it was in shed when I got it, and I get back and it's just this bright blue. Hold on, oh, there we go. pull it up. Oh wow! Oh, that is and awesome. that photo's not edited at all. What color was it before you left? Uh, it was just kind of this green turquoise. Uh, I got a photo. In fact, I have a photo of it staring down a rat right before it left. So, based off of the um, what you were talking about, as far as is it, you know, more ethical to put down a rat? I think with vipers, it's a little more ethical than constrictors. To let them so to more ethical yeah. to let them kill it, or you kill it for them? Uh, for you to let them kill it. Gotcha. So. Yeah, see that? But yeah. That's kind of like green trees, though. You, you, it's interesting to see what color that's going to be and how it's going to look in a year. Oh, yeah. And so he told me they color up better than they color down. I was like, cool. But yeah, I, I like those. I think he told me that. But speaking of stupid things that I do, um, let's go back to uh, this photo. There's that bear after running after car. There's me drawing pepper spray. <laughs> Hold on, hold on. I'm going to pull it up on the screen so people can see how dumb you are. <laughs> so, 
That, that's that really fucking close to that bear. Yeah. It's yeah, like it's three bones. Like, are you telling bears. it to suck it? It looks like you're like degeneration <laughs> and you're going, suck it. <laughs> yeah, is... but, but yeah, uh, there's uh, some people behind me, but that's him when he's first crossing. And if you look there, he's kind of foamy at the mouth. So he was already stressed. Yeah. And then he just turned around. Well, and you know, like, Hey, look, like that post. What's the worst that could happen? And then... Um, so that's my sister taking the photos in the car. She's but, the uh, smart one. Got it. Yeah. Well, she was just the tired, hungry one. She like when we arrived there and I first started photoing the bear, I was like, look, the bear is going to come up the river because the sun's going down and I'm going gr- to get some great shots of uh, the other bear, which I did get some great shots. I was like, please just be patient. She had been waiting an hour when that happened. I go down the river because that other bear finally goes, uh, you know, towards the river. I was like, I'm going to get some great shots from the bridge, good distance away. And then mm-hmm. I come back. And so I forgot about this whole part of the uh, story. There's a video of me filming on my telephoto, kind of like NARBC, except it's not a prime. So it's not quite so heavy. And so I'm walking around with this telephoto. You're getting the most blurry video. You just know there's a bear there. And I'm like, oh, Aisha, get back in the car. Get back in the car. Because I'm walking towards her. She's getting out going, hey, the bear's there. And I was like, yeah, I see it. But uh, I was like, get back in the car. Because I, I know. So I'm walking towards the bear again. Because uh, that's not my car there, that Jeep that I was driving. I was in a Mini Coupe, which is where this is photoed from. So the bear was about at the same location. Except there were the no, no other cars there. And I was walking towards it to get back in the car and leave. But luckily the bear didn't care at that point. I guess, you know, the uh, whatever kind of car that was taught him a lesson. <laughs> so we talked about dumbasses taking ivermectin and other ways to try to get rid of COVID. Jason miller did post an interesting article about something that may actually get rid of COVID. It is snake oh, venom. that's what Jason posted. Yeah. Who posted the thing about the... I don't know. I did see that one too. The Cobras. I saw that one too. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was snake venom. It's the I'm gonna look it up because it was a it was a viper that I had actually never heard of and I'm gonna butcher its name because it's it's a weird one. Um, but there is a also viper. People can't see you. Oh yes, yeah, so, hold on, hold on, wait for it, wait for it. There I am. Um, oh, where's that? Oh, it's the Jararacusa pit viper, and I'm sure I <coughs> that, but found out that a protein and its venom can help combat uh, COVID, can help stop the whole process of COVID and make it so that it cannot continue and get rid of it. One thing they do stress in this article is that they don't need the snake to further this research. They can create that protein in a lab. So like, we don't need people to go out and get the snake. And the one like uh, herpetologist at this college is basically worried that people are going to go out and try and find this viper and try and help it cure itself, cure the family with this viper, which that that's, again, like the people drinking ivermectin. Let's say if they're dumb enough to do that, let them bite them all. But it was Ryan <sighs> Gostolo that showed oh. that. I went and looked because I want to give credit where credit is due. But uh, it was a very interesting thing to see. It's always interesting to see when you find these articles where, like, snake venom can cure this. Ryan also uh, shared a photo of his royal python. Yeah, his, yeah. <laughs> it's fucking ball pythons. Ugh. Uh, oh, the I, I posted this, the Ball Python Genetics Project, who we had on before when they talked about they were um, mapping out and trying to figure out if they could look at your sheds and tell you if it was het this, het that. Uh, they've had some kind of little things, breakthroughs come through. The students there are discovering gene for yellow belly. Uh, they're also That's studying hot. other morphs in the yellow belly complex, such as spark, spectre, and asphalt. Uh, so... They're getting to where they can add more genes to that whole testing thing. I know Travis Wyman posted on there that he's got a whole bunch of sheds that he's uh, going to send over there to them. Yep. So it's very interesting to watch them moving forward with this project. And I'm telling you that someone is going to help them pick this up, and it's going to become a viable business. Yeah. There's too much money on the ball python side of this business for this not to be a viable business to help make more money. So it was just very cool to see them adding more because before when we talked to them, it was just – uh, some of the albino complex stuff, but they're gonna start adding some other things, which will make it very interesting, especially for uh, yellow belly. Because I know I, I the miniature amount I do know about ball pythons. Uh, so many people argue on whether a snake is yellow belly or not, 
because it just looks like a fancy normal, which is another reason I fucking hate that jean because I hate any jean that just looks like a fancy normal. But well, and then there's the whole yellow tinker, belly, yellow belly, and gravel, gravel and tinkers. Yeah. Uh, you can't tell them apart. You basically have to prove them out. I'm sorry, you got to talk in the microphone. That's why we have microphones. I know. I, I mean, tinker. Sorry. The, the there's tinker no project. normals. There's no normals. No, 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 no. Every one of them can help get you to a special project to make lots of money. Yeah. Uh, Another really cool thing I saw this week on the Primitive Predators YouTube channel, they hatched Nile crocodiles. Not like in an incubator. They built these amazing... If you ever watch Primitive Predators uh, videos, go watch them. They're building this amazing crocodile uh, facility down in Florida with these huge naturalistic outdoor enclosures. And their pair of crocs, their Nile crocs, laid eggs. The eggs naturally hatched in the enclosure. And now they have a whole bunch of little Nile crocodiles swimming around. He actually went in there... They found the eggs, some of the eggs that hadn't hatched yet. And while they were in there, the mom came up, grabbed an egg out of the nest, got it in her mouth, moved it around, cracked it open, went out in the water. Uh, the baby was still born. Eventually, the mama ate it. But for the longest time, you see her trying to wake it up, uh, moving it back and forth in her mouth in the water, trying to see if it was alive. And, uh, and then finally, she, it didn't. And so she ate it. But to be able to see that behavior and all that and stuff happening in captivity, definitely go check out Primitive Predators on YouTube. That video was super awesome to see crocodiles doing behavior that we know they do. You just don't ever really get to see because they'd much rather show Nile crocodiles eating zebras. And trust me, I'd rather watch that too. It's really awesome. But this was great. Like I said, when Only if he it's got narrated a, by David Attenborough. Yes. Right. But the, he, uh, he's the, going to live forever, by the way. He better. He's outlived his brother. Yeah. Uh, hey, uh, uh, Mag. Robin Mags. Yes. She just posted that parts of their neighborhood are starting to get power already. Oh, sweet. I know she posted... Uh, she was worried about some of her animals and trying to find help with some of the animals she had yeah. because they had power down there. Yeah, and their barn got barn got torn up pretty bad. Too. Oh, did it? Mm -hmm. uh, oh, I also posted my new door. They, they live in West Wego. Yes. West Wego is, is the end of the world down there. And that is where the yeah. New Orleans show is, the so West Wego. If uh, anybody's getting a large FEMA payout, tell them to buy some solar. <laughs> Shut up, <laughs> You know that, right? <laughs> uh, somewhere. I, uh, I posted my, my new door covering for my snake room. If anybody has a, uh, oh, what's the Halloween place called? Spirit. Spirits. And if you like Beetlejuice, they have an amazing door. So cover. basically, if you have a failed big box store, you go find that. Spirit There's a spirit has there. moved into its dead shell. I'm telling you, that is the most amazing business plan yeah. on earth. They own no property other than some warehouse somewhere. They rent it for a few months, and your failed business only helps them. Yeah. So any failed business in, and they don't even care where it's located. They don't have to be in a good neighborhood because you're going to fucking come to it because they're only there for two or three months out of the year. And whatever they sell, they sell. And whatever they don't sell, they'll sell next year. It's fine. Are you talking about the uh, spirit? Sorry, I took off my phone. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. I didn't share this because I didn't want to be offensive. So I only sent it to like my, like, like Mario Nickerson, uh, different people like, our, um, people who served who would find it funny but i didn't post it um but this is the u.s embassy in kabul <laughs> <laughs> sometimes i can't see it it's 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 photoshop make sure both the u.s embassy is now spirits <laughs> Which... and i was like I, it's a little soon so i didn't want to be insensitive because you know like i have the utmost respect for the whole situation and i know that I'm the like I'm with everyone else who never went over there. I'm just as ignorant. But I was like, it's more like jab at spirit than anything <laughs> else. Emily in our chat says that she had a spirit Halloween move into an old gas station. I've never seen that. But that's interesting. Wow! Right across from the Victoria's Secret in the Pearland Town Center, there was an empty building uh, store like two years ago, and they put a spirit in there, and then it in was the mall. I went over to yeah. Uh, it, for some reason, in this part of Texas, we have these town centers. Someone decided that it would be a good idea to yeah. build outdoor malls. Like small outdoor. Yes, I went the other day in Southeast Texas. And it was hot. There's like five days a year where it's enjoyable to go to that fucking mall. Well, the great thing about the the funny thing about uh, well, it's not that, but the funny thing about Spirit is that you'll find a Spirit in a torn down like Kmart in a shitty neighborhood. Yeah. But I went the other day and. Uh, I was near Santa Fe, whatever that part is over there where the, the uh, other Mediterranean all you can eat buffet is over there. That's like a really nice shopping there, center. Yeah. But one place there went out of business. And at some point, there was a spirit in that place mm -hmm. as well. And I'm like, that's so the Best Buy built a new store about I don't know, 10, 12 years ago. And that spirit has been in that old Best Buy store every year for years, right there. Really? Everywhere. Yeah. 
just it's amazing. But anyways, I bought a door cover. It's it's a sandworm. As someone who loves Samboas, the sandworms from Beetlejuice remind me of uh, Samboas. And so I now have a giant sandworm on my door going into my snake room. Great. Now that's going to be the next name that needs to be retired. It's Beetlejuice for a Beetlejuice. Samboa. <laughs> <laughs> um, I did see that. I also posted a thing. It was kind of a sad article that they're finding out the, the pink iguanas on Galapagos that we only found out about a handful of years ago. Uh, the population is actually suffering. It's pretty low. They're not 100% sure. I would imagine it has of to what? Be the pink iguanas. Oh. Everybody knows the marine iguanas. Those right. are the ones that always get the big push, and their population is doing fine. There's a shit ton of those big black iguanas just squirting salt out of their noses all over Galapagos. But the pink iguanas, they just found a few years ago inland uh, on a mountain, um, and they've done a recent study, and the population is only 211. I saw that. It's a very small population. So that was kind of sad. Uh, trying to see if there, what else got posted. If anything else, I wanted to make sure I covered before. I think that was it. Um, any, any money? That was all I had. Jimmy, I mean, we've talked about some dumb people of the internet. Oh, I've got a few, but I know, <clears throat> I know you've you've had some. There's been some good ones shared in our chat with John Grant. Um. Been a lot of found sulcatas and found tegus the last couple of days. Oh yeah, in the Houston area. Okay, this one's not a dumb person, but the picture you sent me earlier of the anatheristic mud snake—I've never wanted a snake more in my life I than know. that snake. And it's weird. I say, I didn't Normally, they have red bellies, and, and I love—I love the color of a of a mud snake. Like it's somebody just, posted that in like I think the Florida Snake ID group. They're like, "What well, is this?" It's and a, I'm like, "That looks like a fucking mud snake," but it's it's anery. Yeah, and sure enough, people started commenting and said it's definitely an anery mud snake. Of course, the guy who posted it's like you need these words I can understand. I don't know what anery is. Uh, oh, also lately there have been a lot of uh, what's this ball python? This happens all the time. Though. What is this ball python morph? Yeah, and, and you're just like normal, normal. That's a like clean your fucking house. Yeah, that one picture that you sent me. <laughs> Look, if you're going to take a picture, and I'm very conscious of this when I try to take a picture of a snake, and I know I'm going to post it, I try to make sure there's not shit in the background. Uh, make sure if you're a hoarder and you own a snake, but you want to show the world your snake, just fucking walk outside. Please walk outside. One, you'll get a better lighting. Two, I won't see your panties, use Q-tips, whatever the fuck else is laying in a pile who, behind who, your snake. Who is that retic breeder who people always share his photos that he posted? Samson. Like the, the ones he posted. Samson. Samson. The Samson, one we got busted yeah. for dog fighting. Yeah. yeah. There's also been a uh, several people lately posting pictures of uh, ball python eggs that they fucked up and they, they go, I'm not sure what I did wrong. And yeah. They've cut them open way yeah, too what earlier. Did you cut them? Oh, like day 47. Oh, there's, there's what you did wrong. What you did wrong. You, you want to know why it's soft and not fully colorful and dead. It's, <laughs> it's not done yet. Yeah. Here you go. This is one I meant to send to you guys the other day. What combo you think the, the pairing was a lesser inchy to a Mojave, Mojave inchy odium. It's a fucking window about the size of a dime that they cut into an egg trying to get people to ID the well, egg already. There was one earlier. I saw they had, they had cut open the eggs, and it was five ball pythons, only the head sticking out, sitting in a tub. They're like, I need help IDing these. That was a joke. Was it? Okay, yeah, thank that God. that was a joke. No, he 100% was joking. It's okay, hard to tell because on World joking. of All Pythons. No, yeah, he, was, he was joking. Because on World of All Pythons, there are some people that are not joking, and they post stupid shit like that all the time. Uh, there was someone who posted about, um, you know, those snakes, their snake loving them. And of course people are like, your snake doesn't love you. And there's this person who's joined one of the local Houston reptile groups that has decided that she's, uh, she's brand new to snakes, but she is now the expert and is going to tell everyone that they're wrong about everything. Um, like if you have more than five snakes, you're a hoarder, <laughs> um, because you can't handle all of them every day. Uh, yes, then, and they like that. I'm like, yeah, I'm like that. The snake would rather just not, you not fuck with it most of the time. <laughs> um, <sighs> she posted a big thing about love and this and that, and someone explained to her how love works in the brain and what part of the brain. She, her response was, "Look, I wasn't asking for a science lesson. I'm like, well, bitch, you're in the wrong group. <laughs> well, you got one. <laughs> this is a fucking reptile group. You're gonna get a science lesson. Um, is there a difference to? A, is there a difference? B tween two different words, a <laughs> cotton mouth and a water moskin. I saw that. That would hurt my brain to read. Wow. Yeah. 
And then the first comment was, I've seen them in swarms swimming towards a boat. <sighs> no, you haven't. This was one, uh, and, and I'm going to, this is how it's written. Here it goes. So, so as I was younger, I went fishing in a ditch. It had rocks on the bank. Yeah, I was just going to read that one. As I sat down, I looked to my left about eight inches away, and a snake slithered away. I didn't see it head or its body, but it was gray and had a broad tail. My dad said it was probably a water moccasin. Could somebody verify this? I've always been curious as to what I seen. 20 years ago, I saw, what I fuck? think, a snake. Can there's, you tell me what kind? There's no picture. Wow. Anybody wondering, oh, but what's the picture? There isn't one. I'm supposed to imagine what this person saw 20 years ago, an idea snake for them online. Yeah, someone posted a uh, a photo of a, uh, I think it was a, a cotton mouth, and it was zoomed in really far, like close. And you could tell it was zoomed in. And uh, this guy posted this thing about, it. I'm amazed how many people, pictures of dang dangerous venomous snakes are taken so close. <laughs> Why are they taking their picture? You take your eye off the snake. Sooner or later, we're going to see where one of you dumbasses got bit. And I was like, hey, uh, modern phones and cameras have a little known function called Zoom. <laughs> and uh, he didn't respond. My thing with venomous snakes is when people have a, like, they take a photo, the snake's hook, you know, because they're trying to be responsible with the photo, but they're looking at the camera. And I'm like, hmm, yes. look at look at the snake. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Bruce Ireland, who is a, he's got a TikTok. He's a snake removal, like, does it for a business in San Diego. Catches, there, done that. He catches, <laughs> what'd you say? I said, been there, done that. Yeah. He gets to catch rubers though, like Ooh. on the regular. Nice. Yeah. Uh, he pulled out five of them out of somebody's backyard couch the other day. Brian Hughes is my favorite guy. He's out of yeah. Arizona. He's yep. got the specs. He's got the black yep. tails. He's uh, the one that has the googly eyes on his um on his tongue, isn't he? Uh, I don't know. Anyway, don't yes or no. so Bruce posted a picture of a liar snake that he you know caught out in San Diego. There, they have him out there, and this guy commented about it's a corn snake and like gave this whole dissertation on <laughs> corn snakes and how <laughs> why they're called corn snakes but they're actually red rats and blah 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 and i'm like man you tried really fucking hard to sound like you knew what you're he, talking about he officially put sound really dumb he put every single thing he knows about snakes yes, in that post in that that's post. it yep. that's that's the mount and then the next person called it a horny toad i think they must have been joking <laughs> i'm hoping uh i like this oh, one. somebody else called it the nerodia fasciata yeah, it's uh, a water snake. It's always a water snake. Yeah, no, it's a not even close. I like this one. Uh, the dying Kruger effect. <laughs> yeah, yes, hundred percent. This one was uh, in a king and milk snake group. Do your guys like to watch TV? I noticed last night while I was watching TV and holding my boy. Every time I'd move, I'd move. He, he there's no apostrophe there, so it just looks like it says head without an a. He'd have to move back in a position that he could see the TV. I was watching Love Island, so it's not like there was other animals or anything, but he was so interested in it. He watched TV for probably like 15 minutes until he decided he wanted to move around some more. This is him in bed after some TV. It was a picture of... Wow. No, no, your snake didn't watch TV, <sighs> motherfucker. Yeah. If you've ever held a snake, when you move them, they have this thing about keeping their head in the direction and seeing what they're trying to see. So if you are on one side of them and they're trying to keep an eye on, on you... And you move them a direction away from that, they're gonna turn their head back to keep their eye on you. That's how animals work. This person posted in a corn snake group railing on exotics by nature. Actually, I just realized that who it was that uh, that posted this snake. It's a blood red, sixty six percent pos head scaleless, and she's like, "That's not a scaleless snake. Why are you advertising it as a scaleless?" <laughs> blah blah blah. And then got mad when people tried to explain to her what a pos head is, what a head is, and uh, yeah. Anyway, I think I'm um, I'm done talking about dumb people today. <laughs> well, I, I've got one more that I really appreciate. Um, it was it, it was on my sixty rattlesnakes from the den under the house. Mm -hmm. Do you and still get said, you still get people watching that every now and then and leaving comments? Oh yeah, no, it, it, like it, it's still my top rated. Um, I think that one's. Uh, yeah, no, I, I get comments and I still get emails for every one of the comments. It's kind of annoying, but, uh, but I always get the ones like, you know, how did homeboy squeeze his brass balls through that crawl space entrance? I love those ones. <laughs> if I ever need like a self-esteem boost, it's just everything about my balls and my raisin pay that I needed um, back then. But, uh, 
but yeah, no, like the dude under the house needs a big raise in pay. And somebody responded saying, to pay for his testicle, testicle reduction surgery. Like, <laughs> responding to him. And then the, the first guy said, come over here and say it to my face. <laughs> he goes, what are you talking about? My comment was agreeing with yours. And, like, he gets, they get in an argument <laughs> with each other. They're arguing <laughs> over your balls. <laughs> yeah. Your testicles have started a fight on the internet, Max. Yeah, I was like, dang, like, people, yeah. Um, He's trying to defend your ball's honor. <laughs> so, <laughs> how am I not subscribed to Max's view? I don't know. I don't know. I'm about I to get. I thought I was, but I am now for sure, hundred percent. I uh, so I have one more, um, <coughs> and I was good. I didn't actually uh, tag. Uh, Dr. Warren Booth in this because I know that he's probably tired of being tagged. Oh, yeah. People arguing partho. But there have been several clutches this year I've seen of people having partho babies. And and people that are educated on the subject know that a clutch of ball python eggs can have both partho eggs and regular fertilized eggs in the same clutch. It happens. I've seen it happen. Someone posted one in a ball python group and people were saying partho. And this one dude comes in railing about how all of us don't know what we're talking about and it's super rare and how would it be this if it's so rare even though it has been shown over and over again that partho is not rare and it happens quite often just most of the time people aren't aware enough to label it they just assume it's a regular baby and he keeps going on and on and on and then i finally just posted warren booth's website i was like go read this i have read it have you and i was like i've talked to him yeah. So yes. And my response was, "Well, you if you read it, you must have not understood it." <laughs> he, but he, he tried to impugn Warren's uh, research by basically with Google searches. Yes. And I told him, I finally was like, "This guy's a fucking idiot." He's uh, Swedish. So now, maybe. now if he's Swedish, now I just picture the Swedish chef just sitting <laughs> on his computer going. Burr, 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 burr. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, so, oh, I'm sorry. John I, I, I missed that. Tagged my, him. That's I'm sorry, John did. Can you do that again? <laughs> Did Warren ever respond, John Grant? I, I, I don't, I think, I don't off, think Warren. I turned off commenting. I was like, I've had enough. I think Warren's tired of having to yeah, tell but people. Warren might get a couple beers and be like, hey. That's true. Give him some tea. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So <laughs> one of the things I really like to do in October, I'm going to the Denver Venom Conference. Uh, so after my whole fiasco with uh, NARBC, were you guys at the NARBC auction? No. Okay. So basically, like, I went up there, helped support it. Uh, 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 oh, yeah. snake bite uh, foundation made that whole video and so i i ended up being like like helping out with a lot of their their marketing and st stuff and i'm sitting down and talking with them in denver in october and so uh what's really fun about these conferences they normally happen in houston so in 2022 it's going to be in houston again Looking but it's medical like licensed people in published like medical journal stories about people being stupid and for it to be published in the medical journal, it's got to be next level. One of my favorites is, uh, you, you know, whole, the, the whole myth with tasers and neutralizing venom. Yes. They, there was a guy, they, they hooked him up to a car battery trying to shock the venom out. <laughs> wow. So, so Max, that, I'm, re I'm reading the comments on your video. Oh yeah. Somebody told said you need to lose some weight. There wasn't much room down underneath there with you in there. <laughs> but everyone else commented on the size of your balls. That's pretty good. One guy said they're their average size, you just have four pair. <laughs> <laughs> so they carry around like udders. <laughs> so that he can he can feed all those rattlesnakes that need their milk. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Some guy says, sometimes I think I'm pretty manly. Then I see something like this. Oh yeah, I could Max probably couldn't get his head through the door for a week after see, this. But see, the funny part about that is <laughs> I know Max, and therefore none of that stuff is serious. Oh, I'm about to comment, by the way. <laughs> and you should be like, if any of y'all really knew how small his testicles were, this would be <laughs> Oh. After watching this, like, I'm going to have people trying to grab my balls at Conroe. <laughs> Check those things out. Thank you better uh, so you're going to Boston, Boston and coming yeah. back in time for Conroe? Yeah, I'll <laughs> only be there like four or five days, four days. So... I'm looking forward to Conroe. Yeah, me too. Yes. I'm, yeah. I'm bringing a lot of shit to Conroe. John Grant asked if I've seen Max's balls. No, but it's a matter of time, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> like James Regoli has from what I heard earlier. <laughs> no, no, no. Ja okay. James stole Andy's phone and photographed his balls. 
Uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, and this was like two and a half years ago, three years. Like it's been a minute. <laughs> Andy posted him for a while, and they never got taken down. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> like oh. a while. <laughs> All right, so I want to get to our giveaway. It is down the first of the month. We have a new giveaway this month. Yes. Uh, so our giveaway, the last two months, we combined it because we kind of... Max still has to drive like three hours to Dallas, right, Max? Oh, yeah. Caffeine's never been better. <laughs> so the Grant Family Exotics is giving away a whole set of utensils, or as Sean said last week, tools, but it's way more fun to say utensils. Hold on, but don't, it don't is... give away yet. What? <laughs> oh. <laughs> too late it's the wrong one but you can win 12 inch hemostats 12 inch feeding tongs a large cage hook and a field hook all made for, by best exotics uh given away by grant family exotics uh the her whole herps family there and so we unfortunately had a very low number of entries i don't it was just take a picture and post it and hashtag but anyways like the winner give you some really good free shit i know and that's really good stuff i was told i couldn't participate you can't participate you're, you're <laughs> on the show you can't as part of the show uh but we did have a winner uh i put in the names i did the run random number generator and it was actually a friend of ours drew shoals from uh oh cool the the learning zoo the red what is, i can't remember what his zoo is called the learning zoo the learning zoo, but it oh, makes it easy because the use. Well, the great thing is that Conroe is next weekend, so JT can just walk over to Sean's table, buy them, and then take them over to Drew at his table. No shipping required. But with that said, and congratulations to Drew. I, I, he actually doesn't know because I haven't messaged him yet, but I will message him and tell him he won. Uh, he posted a picture of him with his uh, black dragon. Yeah, it was a picture of his black dragon on his head that he got from Blake. That he got from Blake. Because if, if around here, if you've gotten a black dragon, you got it from Blake. Probably. <laughs> um, but our giveaway, I'm very excited about our giveaway this month. And I'll post it as soon as we go off here. I'll post it on Facebook. But we are giving, I say we're giving away. It's being sponsored by VivTech. Our buddy Ryan McVeigh over at VivTech with his awesome new uh, LED UVB bulbs, which I've seen some of the data from those things. Uh, the actual, like the hit that he's doing. And it's, they're great. Right. And you've seen the actual. I, I'll say I bought one. And we had a bearded dragon. Uh, I've talked about her before. I got her from a college student who kept her on carpet and fed her dried crickets for two years. Thought she was a male. Her name was Reptar. <laughs> um, I got her home. We had her a couple of weeks. And I was holding her one day and picked her tail up. And I'm like, uh, this is a female. <laughs> and uh, she had NBD. But we've since gotten her pretty healthy. I mean, as healthy as she's She does really get. good now. But yeah. uh, she, she had a, you know, a. Um, one of the, the a strip light, but one of the power sun. Yeah. And it was probably seven months old or so. It was getting ready to be replaced. So I put that light on her and it's, you know, it's a spot. So yes. it's a lot smaller and it's not nearly as bright because that bright lights for you, not for the reptile. Yeah. For anybody. So that is one thing <clears> I talked <throat> with Ryan. One, one hurdle he's having to overcome is that people have it in their head that a bright light gives off a lot of UV which is not true. The UV spectrum is not visible light. Right. That's a very small part that's down past below the visible light. The visible light part is so that you can go, hey, this light's working. Yeah. He could make them with no visible light. And it would still be just fine. Right. But I turned that thing on. She was on the other end of her cage under her heat lamp. I turned that thing on and I saw her pick her head up right. and look around. And she moved the fastest I've ever seen her move under that light, got up on top of the little basking thing she has in there and pretty much that's where she stays now yeah well and that's the amazing thing and ryan's talked about it animals see uv completely different than us we don't mm -hmm. see uv it's not in our visible light spectrum so you turn that light on and she sees the uv light that she needs and goes to it yeah and so i'm super excited this month that ryan agreed that he gave me a question i'm going to post the question on our facebook page i'll pin it to the top of the page all you have to do is answer the question um, and then you're entered into the giveaway. And what he's giving away is two VivTech LED UVB bulbs of your choice. He's got three of them. He's got the the low light, jungle light. Shit, he doesn't like jungle light, but it's it's basically jungle light and desert light. For those of you that are used to the old way. But uh, it's two bulbs of your choice shipped to you free this next month. All you got to do is answer the question and you're in the drawing. And you have a chance to win. And they're like $80 bulbs. So it's like 160 bucks free shipped to your house. Um, and the great thing about them is these things are, are really designed to last for like four years. 
Like they'll last for forever without losing the uh, UV power that you would get in a normal tube bulb where you have to replace them every six, seven, yeah, eight months. So the first call, the the, the, the lowest. Yeah, power. first call. So it's like for crepuscular animals, things that come out during a uh, dawn. Bucks. Yeah. Um, I think they're all 69. The 69? Nice. The jungle cover is 89. Yes. Yeah, <clears throat> and the one I bought is the Power Midday Blaze. And it is. You have to go through three things to 90 bucks. 90 bucks. Yes. Yeah, so a $90 <clears throat> bulb. Yeah. Anybody yeah. out there, again, freaking out about a $90 light bulb? It's a $90 UVB bulb that is going to last you. Like four, five, six. We don't mean it's, he doesn't it's know it. Guaranteed still going. for two years. Yeah, but he said these things. He but had he there. You know, he says they last four years. Yeah, <clears throat> and instead of spending twenty something dollars on a little spiral bulb that you have to replace in six months because it's not actually doing anything, that's another thing with those bulbs. Is those bulbs give off light, but what you don't realize in six months when they're still giving off light, they're not actually giving off UV anymore. And all the other UV bulbs out there, it's a twelve inch distance. You have to keep that bulb within twelve inches of your animals. And for most of our cage setups, that's just not realistic. Whereas the the UVB bulbs from Ryan from VivTech, there's a range up to like three feet, four feet. Mm -hmm. I um, can't wait to get him for the rest of our bearded dragons. Yeah, I'm I'm actually I got to order some this week. I got to order one for my red foot, and I'm going to order one for my Euromastics, and eventually I, I got to get one for our bearded dragon as well. Um, <laughs> but I'm super excited. So yes, this month VivTech is giving away two bulbs of your choice. Uh, get in on that. It's so ninety. If you get order the ones ninety dollars, that's a hundred and eighty dollar value free shipped to your house. James did math. I did quick math in my head. Uh, so I want to say thanks to Ryan. I'm super excited. We're going to have him on uh, fairly soon. Uh, he's been doing a lot of testing on his bulb and some other bulbs because there were some naysayers out there saying that his bulb his bulbs could not do what he promised they could. I've seen the data. They do. Tell him to send them to me, and I'll just make a video about it. You just want free bulbs. <laughs> so that is our giveaway uh, this this month again i'll have that posted as soon as i get off of here i also need to let drew know that he won last month so max thanks for coming on i've been waiting to get you back from uh well i was hoping i'd eaten but if you didn't get eaten i was waiting to get you back and get you on here and find out about your uh time that you molested salmon while watching bears yeah, it's been fun uh <clears throat> i'm, I'm trying someone I went. Someone posted. I went to a pet store yesterday, and they had a Euromastix and an enclosure with a pond. Okay, because there's so many ponds in the middle of African deserts. That's that's nice. Um. Anyways, Max, if people want to get a hold of you, and if they want to watch your video that's coming out soon, and if they want to watch some of the stuff on the humpback whales you're about to see, because I want to watch is. that. Uh, how could they find all that? Or they can go look at your balls as you crawl underneath a shed. <laughs> Uh, those, uh, those, st those stay concealed. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it's basically Max's view on everything. Uh, Instagram, uh, just check out the space at the ap apostrophe. I, I hate, like I've considered even changing the name so many times because like, I guess the X apostrophe S is too much for people. It, and so I just say <laughs> it's Max's view, which is just my view of things. And I'm Max. Haha. <laughs> it's a whole tagline I've had to anyway. It's annoying. But yeah, no, just Max's view. Uh, or if you forget that, just look up 60 rattlesnakes <clears> under <throat> the house and you'll find my video and then just subscribe to my channel. And comment yeah, about my no, balls. Yeah, comment about my balls. I've got a whole other video with the bears that, you know, uh, you're welcome to do that with. And then the humpbacks, uh, I'm excited to see what comes of that because I have no idea. I've got other videos that are like, I'm backlogged a little bit. So uh, I've got some other really cool videos about to come out. I'm just going to, I've been on a hiatus, but uh, but yeah, it's I've got some good stuff coming up. And if you're going to be in Conroe, look for the short guy with the big camera in his face. That's Max. Say mm -hmm. hi, He'll be wandering around filming stuff. Well, Con Conroe like normally you get a couple YouTubers there. You know, the the ones that only like show up to a couple shows. Yeah, I'm like I'm like me, no life. I'm just like, let's go to. <laughs> well, and Conroe's picking up, so there's more and more people coming to these shows now. It's it's yeah. going pretty good. So, Robert. If people want to get a hold of you, if they need to order a high-quality PVC <sighs> rack. They can go to my website, Lone Star Reptile Racks. That's not your Google website. It. You can Google it and find it. It's worth a Google. Nah, it's lsreptileracks.com. And Lone Star Reptile Racks on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. I've been putting up some videos of the CNC machine running. and Yeah. Um, it's 
very yeah. cool to watch. And then again, check out uh, Grant Family Exotics page on Facebook. You can check out the the small uh, flat pack cages that you can get. Again, they're super easy to put together. That's how they were designed. They they lock. <coughs> so if you need a cage that locks, if you whether it's because you're around small children and you don't want them to get into it. Uh, Until Amazon steals the design. Yeah. They could try. Have at it. But uh, or like some people, hot men, some hot keepers, venomous snake keepers have gotten them because they're they're great because you can lock them. The very first one we sold was for a cobra. So yeah, it's for a Western Diamondback. Cool. So check out those. Those are an awesome cage. Uh, if you want to get a hold of me, it is simply underscore serpents on Instagram or simply serpents on Facebook. Uh, or if you want to get a hold of the podcast, it is the Reptile Gumbo Podcast on Instagram, Facebook, and at gmail.com. Uh, again, Max, thank you. It's been awesome. It's been a blast. Rachel, thanks for filling in. No problem. Thanks. For and Rachel me. can be reached at. Oh, that's right. Oh, powerful exotics. I always forget. Power, that's right. Powerful exotics. Do you have anything paired up that you're going to be breeding this year? Uh, yeah, I'm actually about to start pairing here in the next two weeks. I don't know when ball python season is. There's no season. There's no season. Uh, I wanted to be extra careful after the freeze because I had been pairing right before it and uh, have seen some pretty rough things coming out. So I oh, yeah, waited. It's been rough here for people. Waited and get everything back in order. And now I'm going to start. Get all those follicles in shape. Yes. Get a battery with your solar package. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, Max. We're not selling solar panels. <laughs> all right. Thank you all for uh, watching, listening. And we will see you all next week. Remember, next week it is on Tuesday if you're watching live. We're going to be on Tuesdays from here on out. That's it. Goodness. <laughs> Goodbye. Uh.